I mean, I'm just unmuting this here stuff now. That we've been chatting oh, for like you know. I think you were muted on like that one Children of Wrath stream. <clears throat> that was I. I think I saved that in the like VOD thing. It should have it because I. I swear I heard us start talking. You know, I think I had the right one. I don't remember that. I at least downloaded it in my. Files. It was a. There were conversations and people got to peek behind the screens of what it's like when we have to. <laughs> those were actually. Nice those were pretty there. good conversations in comparison. But yeah, I, I might have been playing Final Fantasy. <laughs> those were tame conversations. <laughs> yeah, those were tame conversations. But welcome everybody, welcome. It's discussing tabletop. We're uh, on April second, so no jokes. Uh, April 1st is gone, so I don't do any jokes or anything. Like no, that jokes. Or anything. Humor no jokes. Humor is banned. No fun allowed. I mean, like, that's the thing I have to say about it. The funniest thing that I saw was because, you know, in the last year I've recently, like, along with my normal, like, YouTube, uh, v uh, Twitch people I watch, I started watching some VTubers. A lot of them did, like, the effort of, like, I have a silly thing that I am now for it. And you know, I didn't watch anything on... Uh, April 1st. I watched the Final Fantasy 14 letters from the producer thing because Japanese companies don't do April Fools and when they do they make it very obvious it's fake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember there was one year that it was really bad. Like every channel I was subscribed to did an April Fools video. And it was like, I just, I, I was really tempted to unsubscribe from some of them because it's just like, just, just no, just don't, please don't. Don't do April Fools, it's dumb. Yeah, like, uh, it, it's worse too because my mom's birthday is on April first. I know someone who's so, birthday is April first. Yeah, so she she has had like all of the jokes her entire life, where it's like, oh, happy birthday, oh, April Fools, and it's like, I I, I grew up with. Not really that experience, personally, but, like, the experience that, you know, this is an important day for my mother, and people joke about it all the time, so it's like, I, I've never, like, cared about it because of that. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I think there is levels of, like, you know, the jokingness, like, I, I, I think, like... When you said, make it, like... When you make it obvious to joke, especially if you're doing an announcement thing, because companies love April Fool's Day... Make it oh. obvious it's fake. Or yeah, yeah. or like, like, like I, I mean, like, that's the thing is, like, uh, those VTubers doing their, like, oh, I've got, like, yeah. a, a PNG like, model that's really funny looking, you know, do, just for April do, 1st. Do, do something fine, harm. Do something know? harmless. That's harmless. That's kind of silly. And if you really want to use that again, you know, just make something yeah, that, you, you know, can use it again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, like, you can do stuff like that, little jokey things. Anyway. Ah. Uh, so April 1st is done. We're on April 2nd. Uh, we got some topics to handle and then an interesting deeper discussion. And hmm. Honestly, let's talk about some of these topics because I'm going to link something that I, I have to say. I think, Momo, you're the one that will care mostly about this because it's a Magic the Gathering thing. Oh, sure. uh, I don't care about anything. There was a story, there's a story related to it uh, that is April Fool's, uh, they said, oh. but this is an actual product. Does this hurt your brain? I see it's called Secret oh. Lair. Well, oh, I hate it. <laughs> it hurts my brain. That's oh like, no. That, it's just wrong. It's wrong. Oh, I, oh it's, no. This isn't okay. <laughs> As someone who doesn't participate in magic, even I'm like, I uh, like, I don't like this. This is it's wrong. It, it's like it <laughs> well, feels backwards, but it's not backwards. It's it, like a thing. It, it's like because only this is, the top half. This is, this is oh, no. not this is the wrong way to do magic cards aren't laid out this way yeah so it feels weird yeah like are it, they actual products though yeah, yes a secret layer. they they they, oh. they did say like they they made up a story with this that originally there was going to be right and left hand cards and then they were just they're just kept with the right ones where i'm like no that that wouldn't make sense as a line anyway because our entire language is written from right to left. It doesn't matter if you're right or left-handed. That's just the way our our language developed. Who the hell is this planeswalker? Wait, you sir? Uh, Garuk. I don't uh, know this guy. Uh, he was the original Beast. green uh planeswalker. Ah. Back when they did the colored planeswalkers in uh Lorowit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who's the the fish babe though? Uh, Empress Galenia. Um, I recognize her. Yes, uh, I had to. I referenced oh, her my in God, Children the of Wrath. Text. 
Yeah. I, I didn't even read the flavor text. I was just looking at the art, and it's like, few diplomats can resist the charm of her serene highness's imperial seat. Or seal, sorry. Look, magic the gathering is horny. Look, she does have the power to gain control of target legendary permanent. <laughs> she just steals things. <laughs> That was her point. Uh, and also, I, I I may or may not have Empress Queenie and Murphy. But for those audio-only listeners who can't look at the links because he only watches like an idiot, uh, they basically, for these cards, they switched where the name usually goes and where the mana cost is, and it's not okay. That's not the it's only really thing, weird. if you don't notice it. They also switched where the creature type and symbol are oh, in they, the middle. I hate, I hate that one. And where power and toughness are is the other side. Or if the Planeswalker cards... The planeswalker things are are reversed. So the little ups and downs are on the left, and the total you start with is on the. Uh, I'm sorry, the the ups and downs which are normally on the left are on the right, and the up and oh. the total which you start with is on the right, the left. They did switch the counters. These cards just upset me. And like, it's like I'm staring at it a while, and I'm finally getting used to it. But it's that kind of like when I first started watching, like looking at it, like a couple of times. Even now, like if I look away, and come back, it kind of dizzies my brain a little bit it's... so you play these cards and you deal damage to your opponent player not yeah. their life points or anything like that <laughs> it's too psychic you damage. physically damage you, you the can person fuse them again. yeah that's what this is for oh take, god take 2d6 psychic damage. it's not as much it's not as like damaging as killing someone with the fortnite card though i mean that's true uh though if you're playing in a game where a fortnite card is legal uh, sorry. <laughs> just, just Oops. sorry. I think if you lose to someone using the Fortnite cards, you just can't play Magic the Gathering anymore. <laughs> you have to forfeit your deck. Ah, it, again, like, I feel like this is like one of those weird ones where it's like this is it's 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 a little interesting because it's like it's the it's the catch twenty two of secret layers. It's like you know, yes, it's it's promo cards you're spending extra money on. But they put out so many of them, and these just, like... It's an interesting idea, but it hurts my brain, and, like... It, I, just, so I, I think it's mostly hard. fine. I just... It's, it's fine. Like, this stuff is fine. Fortnite? Nah. Because <laughs> this is more like a, a silly thing that's like, hey, if you want to pay for these weird cards, there you go. But, but like, if it's like, hey, here's... Uh, I don't know, I'm going to make a meme here. Here's, like, Blue Eyes White Dragon... It's twenty five, twenty five, and if you play it, it destroys everyone else on the field. You know, and uh, it costs you know, twenty five dollars. It's like, mm, it wouldn't no, surprise okay. me if eventually there is a Yu Gi Oh secret lair. Oh no, that, that, wouldn't, that would not shock me if that happens eventually. Uh, but but it's like I, I think like it's bad if they uh, use this as a platform to release like overpowered cards. That's my I opinion. Don't... It's been mostly reprints, at least. Yeah, it's usually it's typically just reprints. It's which the... is fine. I just think they're dumb reprints. And well, I think like is dumb. The um, worlds beyond, where it's like Fortnite, Street Fighter, all those. Those ones are weird. Where they're newer cards, I also worry about like yes, they could yeah. do something very overpowered. Now, granted, they do say like with the uh, there's like the set of cards I can't remember what they're called that are in the collector's booster where like. Every collector's booster has like one of the uh, an extra random card that's from this like grouping, which shifts occasionally, which is like you know reprint cards, so you can get these reprint cards and they put them in there as magic versions of them a lot later. So like those Walking Dead cards, which were so exclusive, now they will have Magic the Gathering card versions in that whatever the fuck it's called, which I can never remember. But um, what was I gonna say about this? Uh, you know. The only thing is, like, at least these reprints might have value, is the only thing. Like, I think Empress Galenia hasn't really been reprinted, ever. No, she so. hasn't. Um... She's had a foil, she's had a normal, um, so, the, so, but they're probably really expensive. I, I mean, like, not, not super, super expensive, because I don't think she's, like, you know... Yeah, the... you're gonna have a backwards one. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> uh... If you want Empress Galenia... She will run you about twenty bucks. So I mean, like, that's the price of this entire thing. I think. It's yeah. thirty for the non-foil. So she's taking up two thirds of it. See, that's that's when secret layers are good, is you can get your value of like you know that you don't have to have these reprints. I think that's what someone was. I was heard someone talk about like you know like a lot of the land ones. How like you know we've had so many of them, and the fact is that like 
people want like more like play sets of lands and you they just give single like things so you have an island it's not great you know i it's... want an island that sounds dope <laughs> anyway oh, oh yeah so, with, uh, so these these, these reprints mm -hmm. like are actually like pretty good because two of these cards currently cost more than ten dollars yeah there you go and the thing is i think again it's just uh they the, they there are plenty of secret layers that are good because they have decent reprints you know that are yeah. valuable but like, like if you were to like combat like a gray market kind of thing th this would be the way to do it right look at cards that are like not overpowered or broken and then be like, oh, this this card is like really, really expensive. Maybe we should like do a so, reprint or something. They never think of that. So but they yeah. don't do that. <laughs> Three of the cards in this are um to get them without this would cost more than just to buy these five cards. So So it's so, actually it's actually pretty good. Yeah. So, so have a weird version of them and just save have money. A, a weird version <laughs> and confuse your opponent. <laughs> that takes psychic like, damage. Hell yeah. Yeah, secret layers. Uh, at least this one sometimes seems like they're good. Sometimes they're good. <laughs> uh, let's talk about something that is good. I I, I want to move away from this so my brain oh, hurts no. less. You know, Paizo. Mm. I first want to talk about the new adventure path because adventure path. I don't like that name. Uh, Outlaws of uh, Alkenstar. Ooh, fancy. Uh. So this one is it feels uh it's wild westy. It's steampunky. Okay. It's steampunk I, I saw wild the, west. I saw oh. the, the name in the uh docket and I was like, hmm, hmm. That's not for sure. later. That's for next. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so I was I was right to be worried. Oh the city of oh yeah, oh, oh you're right, I know this city. City of smog. I yeah. know this one, yeah. It's like the se steampunk city. It's the, it's the one city state that I know because its flag has two guns on it. Yeah. Hell yes. That's it, where freaking uh, Nat is in second edition Pathfinder apparently. Yeah. She made a bunch. Of, I mean, she's old, right? She can live like 200 years or 300 years. Or and I mean, crazy. like in between first and second edition, it's only like 100 years, I think, or something. Oh, she's like that. super alive. Then. Yeah. So on the Unless other she side gets of murdered. the continent, the shack is so. Yeah, so, but you know, now she's making guns for everyone. Yeah, but this is the <laughs> this is the city that like I think guns really come from and stuff like that. I believe yeah, this is this was the one that had like the firearm. This, yeah, this is the one that specifically says like you want advanced firearms, you live here. Yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah! <coughs> I know. Uh, I know what next adventure you're gonna run it's, in Pathfinder. This is the cowboy. Yeah, so it's oh, it's the cowboy adventure. It's, it's pretty much yeah, it's steampunk cowboys. That's what it is. You can be an outlaw. Yeah. Literally, that's one of the uh, backgrounds. I mean, the entire yeah. idea is this, you're, you're the outlaws of Alkenstar, so I'm guessing, like, oh. it's gotta be, like, you're... It, I, I'm, I'm gonna be interested, like, in how they, um... Including a backstory of how you... Be, so, yeah, you're, it's like it's like Skulls and Shackles, where you're a pirate. This is like, you're bandits in a Wild you're West setting. You're desperados. Yeah, you're desperados. So, and there's, there's a download for the player's guide. It is... Is it out already? The player's guide is out now. It's free, and the first yeah, player's one, guides are always free. The first adventure is either I don't know if it's out yet. If not, it's going to be coming out very, very soon because usually the player's guide comes out right before they put out the first. Yeah. Card. Mm. Um. Uh. Outlaws of blah blah blah. Uh, it's Outlaws of Alucard. Punks it, in a powder It's expected cap. to run from April to. June, so the adventure path itself is probably not out yet. Mid April is when the first one yes. comes out. Okay. It's well, is it part. like once a month they're going to release? Yeah, yeah part once of a month. It? Um, they they oh. normally do these month adventure paths like when they do them and once a month, and this is one of the they, they've been they're experimenting with. Oh, sorry for a second. Uh, they're the three adventure. Yeah, it's adventure one of the paths. three parters. Yeah. Um, so it's a shorter one. Yeah. Hmm. This could <laughs> be fun. Could be good for getting into second edition Pathfinder. Yeah, I this, this one definitely like attracts me because you know I really like the look of it too. Well, we'll look at this again in three months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when all of them are out, then I would like look at them. You know? I will play my dumb gun paladin if I. Can oh hell it. yeah! We can do the freaking I, I think I double... can still do that in second edition. I think we found it works better in second edition. Yeah, we're doing the the Kitsune meme 
uh, because they're like I mean good in second edition. Champion is also just better. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I feel like when they finally Champion, the good thing about it is that they finally stepped away from old paladins, and they're like, we want it to f- feel like a paladin, but it could be like anything now. And I think that's... Which is a good idea. Paladin yeah. is still technically part of it. <clears throat> um, yeah. Uh, interesting enough, there's... I like this. In the not recommended section in the player's guide, none of the classes are excluded. Yeah. I like that. I think it gives like, you ones that are better for it, but it doesn't say, hey, you shouldn't play these. Yeah. I'm gonna click and it, just says the al- oh. it just says the alignments that are not recommended are lawful good, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. It wants you to be chaotic good or chaotic neutral. Yeah. Lawful good? That's lawful surprising. Good is not allowed, because it's a. Oh, oh, not allowed. Yeah, okay. you're desperados. You can it wants you to be chaotic good or chaotic neutral. You could probably pull off neutral or neutral good. Yeah, it's, that's because there's the, they're strongly recommended, and there's recommended, and then there's appropriate, and there's not recommended. <clears throat> Why isn't that? Can I can't I zoom. I, I feel like because like, yeah, yeah, chaotic good. You might be like the really like the Robin Hood type. While like if you really wanted to play neutral good, you might be like on a like kind of like almost on a quest that you like you feel like yeah. this is the best way to do it. You'd rather not be a desperado, but you like you're like this chaotic. Is... Yeah, neutral or chaotic good would be like uh, Clint Eastwood. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah, because he's in a lot of movies where that basically that's what he it's, is. It's a classic cowboy. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But uh, so April Fools for Pathfinder for Kaiser. Oh. They're always good. I also they know. didn't do a bestiary this year. They did magic items. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I forgot about the freaking bestiary. That was so weird. Uh, I <laughs> am terrified to look at what what <laughs> they. Yeah, head cannon. That's off to a good start. Band hammer. <laughs> Rose of feather fall is nice. Yeah, no, Rose of feathers <laughs> fall. Feathers fall. Okay, cool. This Su- is nice. <laughs> suit of oh, armor. No. Suit of armor. It's, it's a head wayfinder. with a cannon and a tongue sticking out of it. Finder. All right. I yeah. like yeah. Yeah. this tasteful adamantine armature installed within your throat and mouth is linked. <laughs> Into your brain hides and collapses a cannon. So you, you open your mouth and a cannon comes out. Yeah. No, I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> it's it that's super cursed. Oh, it's so it's expensive an, too. It's, I mean, eight thousand is whatever. Level oh, level ten. ten. Oh um, no. <clears throat> Oh. Uh, Dash and travel and beer stained feathered robe. <laughs> oh, magical experimentation gone wrong. Wayfinder finder. What do you. Uh, yeah. instead, of, instead of letting. Instead of a robe that would let the wearer float to the air, they got this. When you first infest the robe, whenever you make your daily preparations, roll 1d6 and consult the following list to determine the type of feathers. Uh, crow, duck, ostrich, chicken, goose, peacock. With each step taken, with each step taken, a huge amount of feathers sprouts forth from the robe with great force. The feathers uh, make you concealed from all of the creatures, but also concealed with the creatures from you. you cannot... I like them. Of course, you cannot use this concealed condition to hide. <laughs> sprouts feathers constantly. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, there's even an art uh, comment here. This feathered cloak should have turned heads. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, the suit of armoire. An, inde- price, price, an, inde- <laughs> an indeterminate amount of one's lifespan spent driving the, to the magic item warehouse, navigating the labyrinth corridors, consuming meatballs, and some mm. gold. <laughs> what a weird price. An Ikea reference. <laughs> Oh no! An, it I, is. an IKEA joke. To wear and oh. remove the suit of armor, you must succeed a DC forty-one <laughs> crafting check. What? Oh, yes, yeah, you do it all creatures. The thirty feet must must succeed a DC thirty-one will check, will check, or become overcome with frustration that you cannot follow the simple, easy to understand diagrams. Minus one penalty to your will saves for one hour. It's an IKEA suit of armor. <laughs> I 
I kind of love this. <laughs> I this I appreciate. These are the kind of jokes I appreciate. <sighs> also, there's a reaction thing. Interact. An enemy hits or critically hits you with a strike, or you fail or critically fail a reflex save. You did fail the check to assemble this suit of armor at least once today. Effect. You forgot a peg or bolt when you were assembling the suit of armor, causing it to collapse into pieces around you. Though this shields you from harm, the triggering attack is a failure, or you succeed your reflex save, the suit of armor falls apart around you into its constitute panels, leaving you unarmored. <laughs> So if you fail to check or to assemble it, you can get out of a thing free. <laughs> uh, uh. Activate one action. Uh, interact once per day. You did not fail to check to assemble the suit of armor today. Effect: You open a set of doors on the armor's front, producing one fancy suit of clothing of your choice. <laughs> it, just, it also uh, holds clothes. You, is the armor just a? Like a like a box you wear. <laughs> you're just a walk. Are you? What is you're it, a walking uh, dress. You're walking. Well, yeah, you're just a dresser. From this the classic movie. timeless suit of plus one resilient full plate is personally assembled from modular pieces of flat flat pack dark wood, doubling as furniture and protective uh, and personal protective gear. So it is also furniture. Yeah, you're just wearing an armoire. <laughs> yeah. So it's got like leg holes and arm holes and a head hole, <laughs> yeah. and you just like walking around. I feel like it goes down to your like your knees, like oh a gambeson or something. <laughs> <laughs> this extremely uh, fetching oversized compass has numerous uh, extraneous gears, levers, doodads, and buttons. It does not function as a compass, so it's posted to the nearest wayfinder. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah. It can hold a single wayfinder. If it's stored in this manner, any Aeon stone it uh, may contain. Provides no benefits, but the wayfinder finder points to the nearest wayfinder of the type stored within instead of any wayfinder. <laughs> so wayfindery. <laughs> oh god. I feel like this is a Star Wars item. I... Activate one action command <laughs> effect. The wayfinder finder shall to explore, report, cooperate. Then rapidly <laughs> explains the certain use of the way. <laughs> Ra then rapidly explains that certain use of the Wayfinder Finder may void the warranty. <laughs> I don't know. It's so weird. Price, ten treasure bundles. <laughs> what? <laughs> How much is a bundle? <laughs> oh, no. Uh... <clears throat> I mean, uh, they did, like, uh, have, like, apparently, like, also, like, they talked about a band hammer, uh, for, you Yeah, know. that's at the top. It's There's, silly. like, multiple versions. The head cannon, I mean, it's awful. <laughs> Brain and throat. It is hilarious. Um, <clears throat> I do appreciate that the suit of Armar's item type is not magical or non-magical. It's chaotic. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. <laughs> It's just, it's a thing. Oh, man, Paizo, you do, you, you do this stuff, and it's wonderful. I'm sorry, you just you, do. Like, I like these because you can even, you can use this dumb shit as well. Uh, yeah, the armoire is just like, it's just like one of those things you can, you can find. Use, they're statted. You can use them. They took time to actually make rules for this stuff. <laughs> like, I yeah, I mean, even the ban hammers, they have damage numbers on them. Uh, the level 18 one mm -hmm. is a 12d8 mm -hmm. damage, <laughs> which is a lot of damage. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but it's B and E critical for hit, its damage type. Critical hit effect. The target must succeed at a, a, a will saving throw or P... <laughs> Or be deleted from one infosphere site. sight. Just not random from any site that they are a member of. The target can restore their account with a heartfelt appeal and or tweeting to the states at the state's orders and succeeding on a diplomacy check. DC, entirely based on the GM's whims. Uh, oh, there's a Starfinder Society note for it, too. Yeah. Yep. Choose for what item currently being worn or held by the target. One spell the target has passed. On a failure, that idol or spell is now banned in the Starfighter <laughs> Society, and no one at the table can use it for the rest of the scenario. Uh, <laughs> the critical failure is now banned from the Kale campaign, and you should email the uh, uh, the OP staff to let them know. <laughs> it's like the, the, this is banned from my entire campaign. It's terrible. Also, these are not sanctioned for Starfinder Society play. <laughs> it's April Fools, duh. Yeah. 
Oh, these are good memes. They do good memes. As always, does good stuff for April Fools. <clears throat> Very much so. Uh, I don't remember us talking about it, but uh, Modifius uh, put out a. I think we briefly talked about it uh, previously, but they have it out now. The Tales from the Loop board game, <clears throat> which is. Oh, yeah, I heard it, about that. It's like it's the miniatures game based on the RPG, which is kind of... I mean, like, for Modifius, I feel like it's the opposite of what they've done before, but maybe not, like, terrible. Because they've done stuff like this before. Yeah. But normally they would, like, you know, do, like, the Fallout Wasteland Warfare, where they're like, we have a miniatures game, let's turn it into an RPG. I usually do the miniature stuff first. Ooh. <sighs> Sorry. I'm just feeling a little, like... I don't know if it's the magic stuff or just me in general. I'm feeling a little, like, dizzy-brained or something for a minute there. So it that could uh, happen sometimes, you know. Ugh. I'm just gonna, like, get myself back in, like... Mm. Is it a snow-plowing adventure game? <laughs> uh, I mean, it could be. Uh, it, it's do... just like they're, like, there's, like, kids dragging a sled or something, so it's, like, that's where my brain went. It's supposed to be, like... I think the loop is kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Weird is the way to describe it. It's like sci-fi, like time wimey stuff, you know, messing around with uh, physics. It's things. off of like I think a TV show, right? Because there's a TV show called this. I don't know if it's the. Oh. It I might be. I don't know if it's at all similar. Like I, I just know that there's a TV show also called this. The t I think the TV show came out after it, and it's kind of based on it. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, it's like I don't know how to describe describe it honestly. All miniatures supplied are unpainted. <laughs> yeah. Um. So in the board game, you take a role of kids who investigate a mysterious <laughs> mysteries originating from the Loop, a huge underground science facility with strange effects on the subterranean landscape, uh, and try to make it home for dinner. So I think it's supposed to be the idea of it's like I guess it's kind of like a little like the um like SCP kind of stuff where it's like a weird facility with things except it's supposed to be more rather than like you know your prisoner is experimenting on really weird stuff it's supposed to be like adventures that like a kid would have so very like eerie Indiana if anybody remembers that one yeah nope <laughs> that was yeah, 90s say, yeah that's 90s uh, because I've heard that reference in the last decade I remember that you know for things like this um, that's the only reason it's I remember that. It's a card that shit. game. It looks like card miniatures game. This one is kind of yeah. Like there's there's a there's a playable board, but there's also a bunch of cards. I remember what it is now. This uh, role playing game and board game are based off of art from an, a, an artist who does really weird art. Of course. Um, uh, yeah, because there's there's a lot of there's like this and then scythe is just based off of some weird ass art too uh i'm guessing the artist is simon stalinhag because yeah. they use his art for like all of this stuff they're yeah like, he does weird art and they're like you're paying me more money to do more weird art <clears throat> sold <laughs> i'm just gonna say hmm mm -hmm. oh hey look conan shining kingdoms yeah that's the thing <laughs> Yeah, more, more no time. reviews and in stock. No reviews. You, a lot, that's like a lot of the stuff on Modifius's website. Yeah, no reviews and in stock. Why? Why is there no reviews on? I like, guess a anything? lot. A lot of people don't leave reviews when they buy something. I think they're. I think it's like the type of person that would be here at Modifius to shop. It's not the type of person to leave a review as much. Um, yeah, you're, if you're buying an RPG book, you kind of already want it. Yeah, yeah, and I like, guess you're you're not like the people that are like on Amazon that would be like you know, this uh, is poop. I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> the board game is also seventy seven dollars. It's a miniatures game, which is cheap for a miniatures game. Yes. By the way, uh, games are expensive. But uh, hey, we have a bunch of uh, Kickstarter RPGs to talk about. Ooh, um, nice. Because I just put these all together because there's a whole bunch of them. And all of them are funded. Uh, right. So I'll kind of run through them as we go. Um, here is uh, Come On, a Japanese fantasy setting for 5e. Ooh. Um, and they, these all look interesting. 
Um, so apparently, like, uh, <clears throat> this was like a, um, apparently it was an Italian author who kept visiting Japan and, like, was inspired to, like, help work together to, like, design this. Because, like, you know, if you're visiting, like, a lot of museums and stuff and being like, oh, these are really neat stuff, we should do something on this. And Oh, the DM <clears throat> thing is pretty cool looking. <clears throat> the DM shield or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is... Uh, I'm just going to say it. Wish of the Coast needs to do more settings that aren't just Europe. Yeah. Please. Please, God. <clears throat> in 3rd edition, they had the entire um, uh, Caratura. Or... Yeah, Caratura. They also had the Oriental Adventures book, which worked for Caratura. Yeah. Or... Uh, I think it also worked for like it was it was like maybe Legend of the Five Rings or something like that. Back yes, it, it would have worked for that as well. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's like I mean, granted, third edition had like way too much stuff, but that was those were kind of one of those things like, hey, here's this like totally different setting, and you could just have like the main book, DM book or whatever, plus like Pathfinder, or, uh, <laughs> player's handbook, I guess would it be, and then that book and you just need those three and you can play in that setting uh i will tell you um from third edition because i experienced it and had the copy of the book uh you just need that book and then the probably the D uh, D dmg and yeah. uh maybe uh the oriental ventures best theory <clears throat> that's all you need those three because granted like e e they, they did talk about some of the base classes the php but they had a bunch of all their own classes too so you could yeah, just they, played they with had those. whole new classes like like ninja and samurai, I know yeah. those were in there for sure. Uh, I don't know if there was any others. <clears throat> there was like a couple sure others. I can't remember them. There was like a um, a type of shaman type character that was kind of like a a, a divine sorcerer. Uh, if I remember, that ninja spirit. was like kind of broken because it was like, hey, let's take monk and also rogue and make them one class. So it was like really broken but it was fun as hell <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> it, it, and the thing is that book came out really early on so it wasn't even like during the time of the bloat they just like were like hey here's a couple of things early on for options you know yeah it's like it, it's the problem with which is because is i think they're afraid they'll get called out by yeah people who yeah, take things way too seriously. Uh, you're appropriating. And it's like, no, it's not. It's a different world. Like, if you just... Also, if you do your research and make it, it's good. Yeah, that's the thing is. And the thing is, um, if they just make it, like, rather than, like, the... the what the Oriental Adventures book, it, it's kind of outdated now, I would yeah, say. Don't, so. don't use the, that term for it when yeah. you make a new one if you do. That's not, oh. a good, that's not an okay term anymore. It's not an okay term <laughs> yeah. anymore. Like... I, I'm saying it here because that's what the book was called. That's what the book's called. If they ever make another one, they shouldn't call it that. Yeah. Probably not. But you could be like, uh, you know, like Karator, Land of Land of the East or something, you know. Yeah. Like... And you can then come up with like, here's the Faerun, which we've been using all the time, version of the East. Here's everything you know about it. You can use a lot of these details for other kind of like um, Asian inspired realms, you know? Yes, because like <clears throat> different cultures exist. It's fun to explore them in art. And tabletop game lore is uh, it's art. It's artistic. It's, you know, it's writing. Yes. It's fun to explore that kind of stuff. I, I do want to see so much more of Toral. The thing is, they keep the Faerun is just Europe in <clears throat> Toral. Uh, yeah, that's all. That's all Ivy wants to do is Swords Coast. That's it. Yeah, with occasional jaunts to places like uh, sometimes Eberron do, or you know Ravenloft. Occasionally they'll do um, Cholt. <clears throat> they did they... Cholt once, and it was kind of bad. But Lamb of the Frost Maiden <clears throat> is. Uh, I forget what that uh, area is called. Ice and Dale, which is technically still Faerun, but it's, it, it's much more northern. It's just north Sword Coast. Yeah. I, I found it on a map one one time. I'm like, oh, so <clears> it's <throat> just like, uh, yeah, the, the Icewind Dale. Iceland. Is, it's just <laughs> was it was tomb uh tomb of annihilation was the one that they went to Shalt for. Yeah, and that was kind <clears> of <throat> bad. 
Yeah. For a multitude of reasons. But the thing is, it has Chult... dinosaur racing though. Well, Chult, Chult can exist just fine because it's supposed to be like, yes, they have their. Um, it, it's supposed to be, like, if you think about it, like that legendary like. Uh, which doesn't really actually exist, but, like, back in the day with explorers and stuff, you know, there was always tales of that primeval, primeval forest in the heart of Africa, you know, where, like, nobody lives, you know, where there's strange creatures or stuff like that, you know, where magic still exists, you know. That's supposed to be the I think it's idea. more the adventure. Yeah, it's more well, the, the adventure's not bad. The, the adventure has... <clears throat> is because the adventure is... It's a meat grinder. Ah, uh, yeah, honestly. that's right. Because it's, it's inspired by Tomb of Horrors. Yeah. Which is, uh... It also... Uh, meat grinder. <laughs> it also kind of recommends using <clears throat> random encounters, and the random encounter table can just brutalize you. Yeah. Like, just, you just, just TPK as a random thing. Oh, I'm gonna roll, do 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 Oh, I rolled, like, three, like, frost giants. What level's the party? Oh, five? Alright, well, they all die, I guess. Yeah. Because it's <clears throat> designed... It's meant to be played that way because they assume the players will try and run away from certain combats. And I've seen it played a little bit in a high-level game. Though I have issues with the people that played their characters in that game. But they were high-level, so the, the DM could roll on that and not worry about it. But if you're playing it as intended, you can just roll a TPK. And yeah. that's how it's designed to play. Yep. Which seems bad? <laughs> I think it's the thing that um, the writers are like, pl players will be smart enough to run away or like make No, no they and, will and, not. And as, as a DM, I will be like, no, they, they are never smart enough. You no, played, players you played have... TNT? The players it, is, are... it is really hard to get players to run players away from something. Players are dumb. They have god complexes. Yes. Yeah. Even, even the level one nobodies have a god complex. Like, players are Players are dumb and they do dumb things. Ooh. I, I, I always remember a story that uh, someone I met one time told me about uh, for D&D &D, where they did a total party wipeout in the first adventure oh, because they, they started a thing where uh, they encounter a golem and they're level one. And they're like, okay, th players are smart enough. Let's run away from this. This is definitely a runaway situation. And, uh, uh, you know, more power to them. But they the runaway, you're supposed to like throw off your armor and swim across this like really difficult swim. That's like is possible. Um none of them remove their armor, they all drown. Yeah. <clears throat> it takes a long time to remove armor. Well you cut you cut the armor, right? Okay. You can it's, cut... a sing, it's a single action to cut the armor off. You just ruin the armor. Yeah. But it, it's Well it, it... I suppose it also depends on the armor because can... Apparently, like, whatever all the characters they had were at least heavy armored, you know. They probably didn't have, like, a full arcane cast or like, something, you know. Like, for medium armor, you can cut it off, but for, like, you know, heavy armor, it's a little harder. But first level, you don't usually have heavy armor. Anymore. No, not typically. And so. 5e, you can start with heavy armor. Sometimes, mm -hmm. some classes can, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's not, it's like a tier 1 or tier 2 heavy armor, it's not... Great. It's usually chain. But this again yeah. was pre uh, uh, 5e anyway. Yeah. So this is like a while ago that I talked to this person. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, but if, it, if it's Pathfinder, it's like here's a bunch of swim checks and penalty from armor. Where yeah. 5e's like, nah. <laughs> yeah, the armor check penalty would have been was like I think like probably would have been like four to six on all these people, and that 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 makes a difference, honestly. Oh yeah. You it's know? especially at low level. And and like they. The thing is, like, the swim checks, they have, like, a little bit of give and take in them a lot of times. If you fail by, uh, like, you know, less than five, you don't drown. So it's like, yeah, those those penalties drown everybody, you know? It's yep. sort of like, you, what? But also, that just sounds like whoever wrote it didn't think about, like... Too much, too much further than that, because like the 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 idea of yeah. the encounter is fine, right? Oh, here's this really strong thing. It's obvious to the players that it's strong, and you have to like come back here or or have like some plan, like to stake it out. But having your only option to in in Pathfinder specifically have a bunch of swim checks at low level, you just bad rolls kills the party. Just period. Like oh well, all right, oh, you're yeah. dead, because that's Pathfinder. Whoever this is three three point oh. 
<laughs> oh, well, I mean, still, 3.0 and Pathfinder are very, very similar. It's even more but, deadly, if not. <laughs> yeah, but, it, like, that that's a terrible, like, here's your only escape. By the way, if you roll bad, you die in a dice game. It's like, no! That's a bad idea! I think it's sort of like the idea that, like, if it's, like, DC 10 checks, theoretically, the team should be able to make it across, you know, kind of thing. Um, like... Not what? everyone's gonna put ranks into swim, so no. you might have you, you might have your strength modifier, which is at best a one and at most a three. Yeah, at low level. But the thing is, again, maybe if, negative if, one if for have, casters. Let's say, like, even like you know, e- 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 even like the caster, you know, like just has a ten strength, has to roll a ten, can only start drowning if you roll less than a five. But so, still, I mean, that's a. It's still twenty five percent chance. Like I think the idea is that maybe Maybe more, but yeah, because this person also started with you know original D anD D. They were an older gentleman that you know I was talking to about this stuff. You know, they probably are used to character deaths can occur. You know, and so setting up a very dangerous situation. You know that maybe twenty five percent of if they all had average would fail. You know, but expecting that like oh hey that those odds go up when you have like the fighter Armor. who has like you know at least you know a five to begin with you know isn't going to fail the check at all oh wait they didn't take their armor off or take off their shields or anything you know and they tried to escape and oh wait that armor check penalty cancels us out so we then all roll low and we all die you know yeah 25 percent chance that uh one player is gonna die yeah <clears throat> that yeah. This means like one player is most likely gonna die right away it's not a Again, good way like, to start a campaign they could have situations for saving them too like on the other side or something like that the idea that you, if you could one... just make it that they get washed away and then maybe there's a, a an actual beatable encounter that the people that get washed away Again, face i think it's the idea that because everyone drowned, you can't do anything to help yes. everybody. You know, it's sort of like the people that should have been there to help the people that might have been failing made terrible choices and also drowned themselves. You know? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's... ah, session one, TPK. Oh, well, <clears throat> thanks for showing up, everyone. Yeah. But, um, b- back to Oops. this one, since we've been kind of distracted here. It, it, uh, it, it's yeah, funded. Yeah. It's, um,. You know, um, it's it's supposed to be very, like, I think an alternate history Japan almost kind of thing it looks like they're doing. Um, because they do talk about it. So it's supposed to be, it, I guess it's to be, like, an idea of, like, that semi-real world. So it's at least based on, like, you know, actual things or something. And they introduce uh, nine new classes. Uh, which is which, pretty good. Yep. You know, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and some new bloodlines too. Uh, uh, inter- uh inspired by yokai of uh, Japanese oh, mythology. No. Um, that's demons, sort of. Yeah, it's ghosts more. Yeah. Indeed. Well, they they're like both technically. Oh, spirits. Uh, they well, can technically be both though, which is weird. Uh, the Hanyo, which... they're, they're they're talking about, like having them half demons, basically. Um, so like. You can be like a Kitsune, Tengu, uh, Bake, oh, Neko, yeah. Oni, Kappa, or Tanuki kind of blooded, I guess. Yeah, because it, it, Yokai is like both demon and spirit. Yokai yeah. is the main group. Demon is the uh, type. Oni, which are demons, are a Yokai. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That, that's why it's kind of weird because it can be both or it can include both rather yeah so I, I like the idea that it's supposed to be because it's supposed to be inspired by like actual like japanese myth and something it's supposed to be like you know, like you're half demon you could be like kind of thing that's kind of neat yeah um, i approve they've got a lot of good stuff um so i mean like you don't probably have to just have an actual historical setting you could probably use a bunch of this stuff for hey do you want to use karatora in your game because it exists in Faerun? Hey, you have some very Asian-inspired things you can use for it. Thank you. Because there are two countries that are actually uh, inspired by different historical eras in Japan. Uh, strangely enough, so there's two, basically, Japans in uh, in Toral. Um, you and don't, you can have either of them. If you don't set your game in Os, you're a coward. It's Os and Wa, I think, the two different ones. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Os is Australia. 
Oh, oh, I'm sorry, that's right. It's Wa and um, I can't Karator. remember the other one. No, well, Karator uh, is the entire um, region. Wa and I should oh, remember. That I was in that game. Um, because there's also like a because like a, a lot of it is there's like the Chinese area, the Mongolian area, with the area which is actually big and has like the the um, horse riders and stuff. There is a Korean-inspired area, um, and then the two Japan-inspired areas right. that I can remember. Um, starts with like a K. Kozakura. Kozakura and Wa, I think the two different ones. Yeah, Kozakura and Wa. Yeah, because you guys were in Kozakura. But Os, yes, I would love for like, oh, that, that getting back to that stuff. I'd love for something for Os, Mastica. I love her Mastica because that's like a, a very uh, Central American uh, styled thing, but with like that fantasy style of it of 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 D and D. I would love that. That would be neat. You know, you could explore some more of that because they they have like a lot some basic information on that. That's interesting. Anyway, no, get distracted by that. But um, yeah. more setting stuff, please. More setting stuff, please. Uh, but regardless, this uh, Kickstarter's neat, and that's the first of our group here uh the second one i did want to mention is i thought it was interesting because it's a 2d6 system Ooh. um oh. westlands um i mean the unfor like unfortunately like sometimes things like this is what sticks out for me so that's what i have to say uh it uh, you can they only wanted fifty dollars they only wanted fifty dollars and you can uh... get the pdf for a buck it's probably it, it's probably one of those things um, where it's they, they it, it's simple and they likely had the money to do it themselves and it's kind of a marketing thing. Yeah, I guess. Well, it's Menagree Press, which I think which we yeah. can look up if it's like any much of a, a Menagerie Press. Let's see. They can they open two d six material and add extra content, including reworking, more dangerous uh, sorcery mechanics, optional rules for simple firearms. So it looks like a expansion kind of thing. Expansion and rework. Yeah. It looks as though it, Menagerie Press is a probably small uh, RPG uh, publishing company. It might just be like a few do a few people who um, write these things. I'm, I don't know. Or like, you know, this is like a group that can publish for people. So it's not really a big group that's the ones running it. Um, I mean, honestly... It's it's a two D six system. Those ones were interesting. Um, the main one I know about is Bessem. Um, it's traveler. A, a traveler. I forgot about traveler. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's a sword and sorcery one, and you can get the PDF for a buck. Um, so, hey, yeah. You know, um, they do have a three dollar and five dollar reward tier. Uh huh. So they do have uh, some more tiers. Uh, the five dollar one is just if you want to tip them some extra bucks. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. Yeah. Uh, you know. Also, might this also might just be like an incredibly simple system, so not asking for a lot. Yeah. So. Well. Um. So you know, it's it's a thing. It's interesting. Uh, it's. If you want to try out a 2D6 system and just keep something simple, uh, which again, simple games can be fun too, maybe check it out. Yep. Um, I will move on though uh, to uh, this one because it is a 5e book, and I really said it because we're doing Skulls and Shackles. Uh, Tempest, a seafarer's source book. Ooh, book about boat. Boat books for, for 5e. Again, well, I because wrote my own. yeah, you wrote your own. <laughs> you <know? laughs> because five E doesn't give us the shit. Well, they give us some things, but they're not great. No, uh, this is a bit more than what I wrote, though. This has got uh, subclasses. This be a whole uh, setting, to be fair. Races, sub races, mm -hmm. unique to the world. Um, the thing I wrote: a new system for ship combat and crew management. Uh, I wrote ship combat, is what I did. Yeah. Um, this has got a bestiary and new spells and magic items and new feats because feats aren't optional anymore, boys. <laughs> uh, but um, that's cool. More like the joke. More settings. Hey, here is one. 
Ah, they they have you can play a, a monkey race, uh, a, a weird cuttlefish people. Hell yeah! Um, oh no. Half mermaids and of course I have uh, that. some bird folk. Uh, parrot folk, to be pre precise. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I I have uh, rules for merfolk, but Five uh, E technically already has some. So I just like altered the deal slightly. Probably don't alter it further. Mm -hmm. They're called cuddle folk. Yeah, they're called cuddle folk. <laughs> I mean, it's a simple Aww. name. Uh, but you've mm. you've charm and camouflage powers. Of course, camouflage powers. That makes very much sense. Makes sense. Cuddlefish. Cuddlefish. There's a lot of stuff here. Pirates. Pirates are cool. Yeah. And if you don't like Pathfinder, here's a 5e version. <laughs> I mean... Uh... To be fair, someone's probably converted Skulls and Shackles to, to 5e. That's highly possible. Because uh... someone did it for Carrion and Crow. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they... Now you have to be curious. Well, I don't... They might not have published it, honestly. I'm sure that so there's somewhere someone has done it and not published it. Honestly, it wouldn't be that hard. Because you just take the story parts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look it up now. And then <laughs> and then and then so it's 41. I was just looking at how many of those stretch goals. They got. So they're, they're pretty far into their stretch goals. They got a couple more they're doing, but they've added a lot of like little details and stuff. Um, yeah. That's neat. Um, honestly, oh, are cool. I, I like piratey kind of adventures. Uh, that's the thing is when I really got my chance to be a player in third edition, finally, uh, the main adventure I was, it was a boat adventure. I mean, for whatever reason, every adventure that that uh, uh, our, our that DM that we played with ran ended up a boat adventure, even once he didn't intend to be a boat adventure. Uh, like, there was yeah. one that we didn't intend to. We stole a boat and Hell became yeah. a boat adventure. You know, we did it a lot. So, um, about $19 for the PDF of it. Um, if you're interested in it, it is funded. Um, it's got 19 days to go for that one. I forgot to say how long the other two were going for. The, uh, Oops. Uh, come on has 17 days to go. Uh, they're all funded. All of these are funded. And then the, um... Recently closed tabs. Where? Re, no, that's that's bookmarks. That's you link them in the chat. <laughs> I can click on them. Eleven days to go for Westlands, but I also have them in my recently closed tabs, and that's just as easy to do too. I mean, I'm just uh, maybe, maybe, possibly. Um, yeah. So, um. Here is yet another one uh, that is funded then, because we have uh, at least this one left to talk about. Because there's one that I had that I don't know if I want to talk about, because that's that's an odd place to be in, I'm going to say, for a second. Um, I, I'll bring this it to you, too. No, not this one. There's one okay. more possibility after this that I, mm. I, I'm i unsure of. Uh, mm. And I'll ask you to... Do we want to talk about it? Because the, I don't, I, I haven't been keeping up with like there had been like, we, a while, a long time ago, related to some weird controversy, you know, with one of the people oh, that's related to it. Secret sharing. We'll yeah, yeah, it. you got a secret chat here. We can put it in. Uh, I will put it on my phone, um, then for you as we talk about, uh, the dark nation thing here. Um, Covering the truth, struggle for justice, ooh. pay the price. Uh, uh, it's funded, and it has eight days left to go. Neat. Uh, um, uncover the truth, uh, ooh, and the price you prepare to pay for game. justice. Oh, it's a Cthulhu game. Yeah. Yes, and it's supposed to be well, more um, human, realistic. I guess like down to earth kind of thing, and it's a. Um, uh, takes influences from fiction like Handmaiden's Tale. Don't know what that is. SS forward slash GB. No idea what that means. Man in the High Castle, 1984's Edge of Darkness. I have never <laughs> seen any of the things it mentions. I know. Uh, I, these are all like pretty, pretty good books. <clears throat> well, okay, okay. 
Uh, Collabority describing the system. Right. The Edge of Darkness is a, is a crime movie. 1984 is a classic book. Uh, Man of High Castle, pretty good book. Handman Cell, a pretty fucked up book. <laughs> I mean, it's it Lovecraftian horror, right? There we go. I, I said the basics of it. There's probably more details to that. Ah, but... this thing. Oh, that guy. Yeah. I, I, I think we should just skip that. Okay. Yeah. That is I, I don't think it's, like, super important. Nope. Um. Uh, and it is gone. Uh, this one, um, very simple rules. Uh, conflicts are settled by rolling a few six-sided die. Uh, there's, like, a dissolu dissolution die. Contacts, combat. Uh, fail forward is, like, a concept. I like the idea that, like... Um, every investigation will have minimal success so it's sort of like you can never have a true at least when you're investigating you can never have a true failure you just might not I get as much I do like the idea of, of you fail but you still get something out of it yeah I think for more skill based checks a lot of times a lot of systems are very cut and dry where I feel like you're still doing something you still might make progress. I, I, unless you roll like a one, I tend to give you something. If you're like below five, you don't really get anything. It's like you super fucked it. Mm -hmm. um, it's got some guidance for like writing stuff. Uh, uh, you know, apparently however much they get is how uh, big they're tending the final book to be kind of thing. Uh, and they do have a few stretch goals, which I think they've unlocked some of them, because they're funded. They only wanted, uh, 500 pound, or was that? What kind of money uh, is that? That is the euro. That the, oh, God, I can remember. You can remember, you can remember a euro easily, because it looks like an E. With two lines? Yeah. Uh, like a dollar, but different. Yeah. So they only wanted 500 euro. They've got over a thousand now. So they've well funded it. You know, oh, the conversion is actually not that bad between euro and uh, dollars, huh? Yeah, the conversions are mostly fine currently. Huh, I, I didn't even know that. That uh, 500 euro is 552 dollars. That's actually yeah. pretty close. Almost like the euro is dropped highly in value or something. Yeah, most currencies are worth around the same nowadays. They, they're kind of floating around where they are. I mean, like, the yen has always been what it is, but the yen was, like, it, it give or takes, like, uh, like th around, like, 33%, but usually it's been around, like, one yen is a cent kind of thing Yeah. for Japan. And then, like, you yeah. know... Uh, it was really strong at one time in history. I don't remember what it was. It was when Japan, like, became a super huge trade nation. Yeah, like, and they were, like, dominating... Like and the, then their bubble like their burst, value. and they have sort of returned from that. Yeah, it was like the 80s, I think, is it? Broke uh, like or eight, 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 90s is when I think it broke. Yeah. And then, yeah. They were an economic superpower in the, from the 60s onward. And then, and then technology. something happened. And people were actually afraid that they would overtake the American economy at that time. Yeah. But, you know, it's the uh, good old economics. You don't know about those bubbles till they break. Nope. And it's like, yeah. like also comparing like you know Canada's pretty close in our price. The pound's always weirdly like a lot more, but it's also just a lot, most most Western currency is well it is it, it's, it's somewhat similar in value to American currency because kind of tied together. Yeah, I think I think yeah. like where they're at, they kind of stay at. They don't. There's yeah. major shifts, is what I'm kind of saying. Like, they're, 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 yeah, most most stable countries don't have major currency shifts in this something drastic happens yeah um but for 10 euros about 12 dollars you can get a pdf copy of this which is a, a a really simple investigatory kind of uh cthulian uh, kind of adventure system which is uh yeah always neat um and uh, the idea that it feels like I, I i mean like just from the entire thing it feels like much more of like a, a realistic investigation story to the, like, weirdness of, like, a Cthulhuian mystery, you know? Um, so, this is just me personally as, like, a, a player, like, my personal mm -hmm. preferences. I don't hate the Cthulhu-esque type setting, but the thing that bothers me about it is it, it's a, it presumes failure, and I don't really like that, because it's kind of like, oh, well... 
maybe you succeeded like here, but everyone's dead. Oh, you've only slightly delayed the inevitable. And I, I don't like super dark settings like that. That's just a personal preference. I, I think that's fair. Yeah, I mean, like, I like the idea that, like, it, I, I guess, like, rather than inevitable doom, you know, it's sort of like uh, you beat it back for now, but it will return. I think that's fine. You know, that kind of concept of it. Like, it's the, the enemy that can always come back. Yeah, because, like, the thing with Lovecraft and Abomination is they're always trying to worm their way in. But, you know, like, yeah. the idea that, maybe know, like... that... No matter what humans do, humans are insignificant because Lovecraft creatures are literally incomprehensible. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's why I like uh, using, like, the... Like, something like the Pathfinder version of uh, Cthulhu and stuff, the Far Realm. Because, like, there are Far Realm threats. It's just that they aren't the same kind of, like... Cthulhuian threats that like Cthulhu stories get. They're like, yeah, they're there. They you could some. I think one of them is actually Cthulhu. You know, you Cthulhu can, like, is actually just a monster in Pathfinder. Yeah, it, it, well, it's technically it's an avatar because the actual one can't exist in any form because some form of, like divineish being See, from outside the universe. When, when you throw it into like Pathfinder, that makes it a beatable threat. But if you're playing it in like the regular Call of Cthulhu rules, it's not beatable. It's just yeah, like delayable. Because all the Cthulhu is meant to be brutal. I yes, feel like... and and I, I'm just like that's not my jam. I, I like the concepts and like themes and stuff, but I don't like the extremeness of it. So like like a, like a Pathfinder version of like a Call of Cthulhu adventure, where like yeah, you know, it might be pretty rough at times, uh, but like you could, like, See, finish the mission, right? I don't mind that, like... like apparently, like, there's this little thing from a playtester feedback of the idea that the sense of these adventures is you're standing against a powerful foe and it's, you're doing something worthwhile, even if it means your own end. And yeah. I think that's the side of it, is that that I like that part of it. It's like, you know, yes, this is, like, an incomprehensible being. And, like, you know, for Pathfinder, it's maybe I can defeat this avatar of Cthulhu and drive it back. I can't defeat the actual thing. I'm only defeating a small portion of it trying to, like, manifest in our world. But, or, like, you or know. Or foiling a weird plot. Like, yeah. you can do that in Pathfinder and not like, go insane and die. Yeah. Where in traditional Cthulhu games, you're either, you're going to go insane or you're going to die. Those are the two outcomes in Cthulhu games. Yeah. I or feel, in Lovecraft games. I feel, well, I feel like this game doesn't punish you it feels like it doesn't punish you enough just from the way they talk about it you know and, and it might be light way on purpose because yeah. uh i don't know if because like the call of cthulhu system you know i don't know how much traction it gets and it might be part of the reason is um, most players want to win it's a very niche system but it does very accurately capture what cosmic horror is as a whole uh, which is why it's very niche, because Cosmic Horror is a very niche genre. Yeah, yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure in Pathfinder it's literally, literally actual Cthulhu. Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh... it, it mentions the, the underwater city in his castle. Oh. It's also CR-30. It has uh, 56 strength. That's a lot yeah. of strength. Um... Plus 49 to Arcana. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I love... Is that all? I mean, you know, it's got other stats that are probably... What is it going to gonna roll Arcana yeah. for? CMB plus 58. All right. <laughs> oh! CMB 97. Jeez! The answer is no. Just put no instead of a number. That's your 30 for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's CR thirty. Can I trip it? The answer is no. <laughs> you can. It's just, you can. It's he's just. You've on got a trip a, though. He's got a ninety nine. You've, you've got to like. Oh, that's right. He's got more. You just have to come up with. A, you just have to come up with a really, 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 really good bonus somehow. Like, okay, yeah. everybody. You have to negative him like to give, death. Give him a bunch of negatives and give me a bunch of bonuses. I'm gonna trip Cthulhu. And then I'm gonna roll a twenty and maybe get a fifty. 60. Yeah. Oh wait, that's not enough. I mean, I when you're when you're being able to take on CR30, that's that's definitely you're mythic. Kind rank. of a god at that point anyway. That's mythic rank shit where you can get like yeah. the, the mythic rank have things like where you're like I give myself plus 20 to this check, you know, and like uh, so you, that that can help. And there's other oh, bonuses oh. and stuff that you can be built So then up. you can get like a 70 on your check. Yeah. 
That's still not enough. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying, like, there is a possibility you could get to, like, a 90 if I cheese it enough. I don't think you're going to oh, be tripping the good one. Anyways, this is a colossal creature. I mean, yeah, that's... You'd have to, like, have, like, some kind of crazy super trip build or something. <laughs> Okay, that, that's the next uh, Pathfinder character, trip build. <laughs> like, what do you do? I trip people. You have to be like mythic rank 10, level 20, you know? It's like, I'm here to trip Cthulhu. <laughs> you joke, but trip build is actually gross. What oh, mean, no. What well, mean, they, they confer attack of opportunities by standing for prone. So, I mean, yeah, that, that could trip be build thing. is actually really gross. If done correctly. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah, Call of Cthulhu. This one probably is less murder you. <laughs> um, oh yeah, yeah. So yes, the Cthulhu you can fight is kind of actual Cthulhu, but the entire idea, I guess, is like apparently he's actually dead in Riley, and oh, that's yeah, like he's, he slumbers beneath the sea. Yeah. So it's like those are like his dreams that manifest on yeah. the world uh, of him. And it's a CR-30, which, you know, probably be worse for it like, to actually show up. I mean, up. If, if you've gotten to the point where you're fighting Cthulhu, he's it's probably woken guy. up, and then the world's doomed anyways. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the world will be plunged into darkness for a thousand years. What's a thousand years between you and me? Yeah. The elves will have to live through most of it. <laughs> yes, they would. They're like, God damn it! Suck it, elves. <laughs> they would. They're like, look, son. <sighs> look, uh, you know. When I you're know... an old man, the, the sky will return. The sky will return when you're an old man. I'm sorry about it. Like the the humans fucked up. You know, they're gonna go through. They're not gonna remember because they're gonna go through generations of this all. So sky is back. I'll remember Sky, you know, when I'm long since dead. But you'll be old enough to be, like, telling your, like, grandkids, you know, like, oh, hey, that's the Sky. My dad told me one about day, that. One day you will see the Sky again. Because <laughs> you were not born mm -hmm. with the Sky. Uh, you have a, a board game thing here. Yeah. Did we talk about... I, we might have talked about this. I... I, I I was thinking about it more, and I'm just like, I might be done with that. You know, it was the, uh, the, 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 I think we talked about the Dead by Daylight Kickstarter. It's up. Oh, yeah, we, we mentioned it. I hate the Dead by Daylight video game. Yeah, yeah. like, I, I forgot I if we talked about it or not. Game. You did talk about that. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's, <laughs> the Kickstarter's up. I'll leave it at that. I, I, yeah. I will, if, if some people really liked it when we talked about it, I will, I'll throw that the link and stuff. But I think we, put our opinions on it uh previously i just couldn't remember if we talked about it when i was making this and now that we talk about it more i'm like oh yeah i think we did did we yeah that sounds about right i feel like that came up yeah i think it did and, and so the way momo's saying it i think it did so i mean there's a link it, it's funded of course it is most of, of course because <laughs> some people like that stuff and they have money i mean it's the honest thing that I'll say about it. I, I, I would never probably play that game unless, like, a group of people were like, hey, do you want to play yeah, that a, game? It's a popular game. I just don't like it. And, uh, you know, um... I, I don't can, like PvP games. Yeah, I can occasionally to uh, tolerate watching someone play it if it's an interesting group of people, or they're an interesting person, like, doing something neat. But that's very rare. Anyway, uh... Let's talk about our deeper discussion, then. That sounds like a good thing. This ending was my a, idea. Ending a long campaign. Now, we talked about ending your game last year, which we kind of hit up on a lot of the different general things because there's a lot of different types of game. And well, what, what we kind of wanted to talk about today was when you have a longer campaign, there's more than just a single adventure. There's probably like at least 10 to 20 sessions of something. So you've had a long time, developed characters, gone through a lot of levels, had a bunch of adventures, developed a lot of stuff. You want to end it in a way that feels appropriate to that game. That's not always easy. No, it's not easy to end the game normally. It's not easy to end the game when it's a long-term game. Yeah. Yeah. There, There is one thing that depends on if Momo wants to talk about it, we can touch on briefly. Because there's also, if you have to end your game really early, mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to talk about that or not. That person doesn't watch this stream. I can uh, talk about it, sure. Yeah. We can uh, start with that. Yeah. So sometimes 
It's like the opposite spectrum of this. When you have a long campaign planned out, and then things happen, and you have to end it early, and you just feel really bad about it. Um, I don't know what you want me to say about it. Uh, it's more of... Uh, oh man, I, I remember having this idea before you joined the call, uh, when we were sitting here reading ready. I guess, like, the, the idea here is you have this idea for, like, a big, long game. Yeah. And you have all these plans and ideas, and you're plotting all this stuff out. And then, through circumstances, you're just kind of like, I can't run this game anymore. And you, you have to end it early. Yeah. Which, you know, sucks. It sucks, but, but the upside of that means we use those ideas. Yeah, that, right. that's the benefit. Is if, if you didn't get very far into the story, or if you come in with a new cast, you can just kind of reuse that idea because you didn't really touch on everything. Yeah, and th th this was like I, I, my suggestion, right? Like I said, mm -hmm. and this is because on Friday we had my last session for a game that started last year sometime. It started in like I want to say. November. Yeah, so it's it's been Maybe. a couple months. Um, it's been, it was a long campaign, and you can we made it to what level seven, eight. Yeah, level seven. Technically, you would have got to eight, eight at the end um, of the adventure. And that's a long adventure. That getting to that point takes a while. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple missed games towards the end as life kind of happened, and there was some reshuffling of times and happen. stuff. Uh, but we kind of got to the end, and I was thinking about it, because uh, I can just tell you, I had a depowered CR-21 Lich that the party was going to fight. Yeah. And when I was looking at the stats, and it's like, this actually isn't that strong. Without its lair, which only gives it like a plus one to its CR, it's really not that strong has like 17 AC and like a hundred and something hit points, right? It was like AC and HP wise, it was weaker than the giant skeleton monsters you guys were fighting. I knew you could kill it, but it's going to do a lot more damage because it's a spell caster. So it has like AOEs and stuff. So it's, it's damage output is a lot higher. So I had an idea of like, well, I could give everyone like double hit points and then like a narrative, like come back to life thing. Or I can just narrate it all and just skip the actual combat part because it'd just be kind of a sloggy, high-level 5e battle, which is just big numbers, big damage, which isn't yeah. super interesting and sometimes. The thing with a lich, I don't know, because magic is weird in the world that we ran in or you ran in. Liches have like three insta kill spells. I don't remember without opening the game. They have finger of death. And they have I wasn't gonna use some of those. Power yeah. word disintegrate. Kill. Yeah, I wasn't gonna use power word kill. I might have used disintegrate early in the fight when it couldn't one hit kill you, and uh, I think I was um, not gonna use finger well, of death either. Disintegrate actually could have very easily one hit killed anyone. Because uh, it's 10d6 plus 40. But you guys were going to have double hit points. Oh, right, true. Sure. So, um, so you, some of you would have had like 80 to 100 hit points. Yeah, the only dangerous one would have been Power Kill, because no one would, probably most of us would not have had over 100 hit points. That would just be interesting. Yeah. And, and that's where I was like, it's going to be a depowered one. Because it, the, the Lich technically fought another really powerful dude before the party showed up. So that was another way for me to narratively weaken her for that encounter. Should it start looking kind of bad, I can have her like, well, she's only got six more hit points left. Just hit her one time and you win. But because of how dice is, while I was sure the party could do that, and I'd still be kind of interested to like redo that battle and just roll it out and see what would happen. It felt better to not risk a TPK at the last fight. Because yeah. that's still a possibility. Um, uh, that that just be dice. Yeah, that be dice. I personally, as an individual, as a player, and as a DM, I think the final battle of a campaign 
should be somewhat narrative because Cause... nothing feels worse as a player than dying in the last encounter and losing the campaign yeah that it doesn't feel great for that yeah we had a semi-narrative battle when your game ended when we fought the half dragon too yeah i believe it was semi-narrative yeah and and that one um the the cr differences between the party and the creature were much closer they were much closer so, yeah. so there was less risk of everyone dying but it was still you still had like some wrong but it, yeah. again it, I was also like I kept forgetting he was a spellcaster. <laughs> Until the wall of fire came he and burned everybody. He's, you know, he's a paladin technically. Yeah. He's dead um, now. But so so I kinda went to like a narrative thing and like be, because the, the party technically had this like double hit point buff, I was describing as like as the fight starts, you know, you still hurt, you know, you take the damage, right? But it's like it doesn't feel like as bad. And then, like, as the fight progresses, it's like, okay, well, whatever that blessing that you had, whatever that spell that was on you, it's, like, gone, right? So you're, like, feeling like, hey, we might die, right? It's, it's like, actually hurting. And then I had the boss basically nuke themselves because they're a lich and they just come back. So it's like, why not? Why wouldn't they just blow themselves up with, like, some kind of magic yeah. thing? And because of the weird nature of the party at that point, uh... There was two people who had like, uh, like a like a faith or like a deity behind them. One of them was an Azimer, One of them was a Kitsune, who in my world are like very spiritual. And so the Azimer, uh, she met her basically her like patron, like her Azimer, like or, or celestial, <clears throat> like bloodline or something. Celestial daddy. <clears throat> Yeah, well, in this case, it was a lady, I believe. I don't... Yeah, probably. I, I think that's what it was. Um, and basically, she was offered the choice of, like, you know, if you come with me, I can, like, impart on you all this knowledge. Because the character was a very, I want to consume knowledge. That's kind of how they became a cleric, was, like, they found this, this old, like, religious book, and it, like, awakened them to, like, this planar power. Because I, I do magic a little differently in my setting. And so they were offered that, and it's like, or you can go back and, you know, live and, and help people. And so they were like, ooh, I really like knowledge, but I, I have to go back and help my friends. And so that was that was them. They went back. Um, our Kitsune, who was Momo, Hello. Uh, met their god. Weird. Um, and it was kind of like, I can give you life again. Um, because it's like not really your time yet, <clears throat> but know that if you go back, you will be going back to a mortal life, you know, one that has hardships and suffering, or you can choose to, to leave and come with me and live in like a divine realm. Um, so they got revived through deity magic, um, and uh, the the elven formerly tiefling cuz again i do i do tieflings a bit different um they they were a uh, rogue and wizard but they were a blade singer and they had just got a moonblade elven moonblade which combined with the some of their other magical items which was a way for me to kind of remove a bunch of magical items but also give them something cool um and they had death ward on them so basically they kind of just blacked out for a little bit but in in their like unconscious state they got to speak with like the the soul of their sword this this moon blade because i'm i don't really do sentient items but i thought that this incredibly powerful item should have something you just like don't it's not like a tangible thing. It's not like, ha ha, hello, I am your sword. Let us murder for the good That's, of elven kind. Or it's not a bro like my staff in the one game. Yeah. I'd, I'm not a big fan of, like, sentient magic items. But I thought the idea of the sword having, like, a spirit, right? Um, so they kind of saw that, and the sword was like, get up, nerd. The fight's not over. Get right? up, idiot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
And then, and then Tantus came back and reprised his role as Badger, <laughs> the, the forest gnome uh, cavalier who rode a giant axe beak and wears a badger on their head, who yep. is technically their brother. Yeah. Um, and and like Badger kind of technically died in that, but Badger had like some Badger weird divine... blessed by a god. <laughs> yeah. The the same floofy god, the Kitsune yeah. god. Yeah. Uh, she's so... like, my reason so at the end of that game I never said it because I didn't expect these characters to ever come up again um, everyone else lost the blessing but Badger got to keep his because she's amused by Badger <laughs> <laughs> see like Badger like like Badger ne would never have ex like assumed he lost his too. So like, the thing is, like, I don't want to like take advantage of that. You know, he's a nice guy. You know, he's just like, you know, it's like it com if it comes up, it comes up. But he doesn't want to try to get it comes up. So he doesn't do like stupid shit to get himself in trouble and get himself killed. But you know, he, he it's nice to know he's got that backup. He's like, and and you know, maybe it's the joke that maybe Gurr's blessed too, and secretly he'll live as long sure. as me. <laughs> Gur is actually yeah, immortal now. Yeah, Gur, Gur, which is the badger that Badger wears on his head, <laughs> is, is is his sort of brother, but not really. There's been a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's a mass grave of badgers somewhere at his home, I guess. I, I mean, all like the brothers and sisters. I, I gotta guy. be honest. Uh, probably, probably like it's a lot. It's a lot weirdly morbid like that. Like I treat them like I treat them like family, but like. My mother raised badgers to, as, like, you know, probably because gnomes and badgers always kind of, forest gnomes kind of are, like, canonically together as a thing, too. They're pets. Yeah. They don't live that long. They're pets and no. companions that die very rapidly. <laughs> and then they're the consumed badgers. for their meat. I, I'm assuming they might not be consumed, but maybe, like, using them to, like, raise A badger lives 24 years. Yeah. But, like, using them and, like, you know, creating, like, fertilizer to raise a garden or something might be, like, one mm, of those things yeah. that... Yeah, circle of life. Yeah, circle of life. Yeah. I feel like that's very forest gnome or something. So, like, you know, there's this particular garden of the dead badgers outside, like, you know, the, uh... <laughs> outside the badger-raising place, you know? <laughs> uh, uh, but, yeah, uh... But, uh... But Badger, a.k.a. Wolverine, uh... <laughs> when they died, um... Theirs was very silly... Uh, th they heard the sounds of badgers playing, and basically they were like, "Come play with us! Oh, it's peaceful and but stuff." Like and badgers horrible, like horrible badger screeching. Yeah, and I was like, "But I, I got some work to do over here. I haven't finished fighting this person, you know." Yeah, but it's like I have to fight this evil lich lady or whatever. <laughs> I, I was, I'm sorry. Maybe next time, and just leaves <laughs> <laughs> without even thinking. Like it's an afterlife or something. I'm just like, "Hey, look, look guys, you know." It's nice for you to invite me here, but, like, you know... And afterwards, he's like, oh, I felt like maybe it was some kind of weird thing in between deaths or something, you know? Like, some shadow yeah. plane, you know? Wait, you mean you can be in between life and death and not accidentally or on purpose make a Draco Lich? Yes! <laughs> weird. So, so yeah, Ooh. and, um... And, and post that, of course, I was like, hey, so... The next thing that's gonna happen... The next major world event is, like, 20 years from now. So it's like, there's obviously little small conflicts, and, you know, if, if the players get involved with them, that's up to them. Um, but nothing that I was going to, like, run a whole game on, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, the the Alame, who was the Celestial uh, Twilight Cleric, uh, they got to hook up with uh, the, the the sexy uh, Raku <laughs> Captain, which is like yeah, a half-orc. Big, 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 beefy orc man was yeah, made up. Yeah, I don't know... I don't know if they had kids or not. Uh, that wasn't really said. Because, like, they're both kind of awkward. Because one of them is, like, he's a boat captain, right? And not, like, you know, sexy man. And then the other one is a super nerd who's, like, mega shy. And it probably took them, like, years to, like, finally get together. <laughs> um... The um, Venny, who uh, was played uh, by Celsier, um, who is sometimes on this channel, uh... They they were the uh, blade singer wizard, and their dad like disowned them because they were born as a tiefling, and then they later got their elven stuff back, elven heritage. And so, after beating the lich, they all got into this airship. They're like, "Hey, we want to use the airship like one more time, and then like go drop off my cool uncle and his like adventuring companions," because they got those guys for the last battle. 
Um, you, you, like, hired a bunch of mercenaries, uh, and, like, his uncle and, like, his old adventuring group or what was left of them, because, like, one of them was dead. Uh, or, or, no, one of them wasn't dead. One of them didn't like the party anymore. They had, like, a falling out. Because um, I actually had, like, a fair bit of background for a lot of my NPCs. Um, uh, so they, they flew over there to their dad, and the whole party flipped off their dad. He's like, ah, oh, screw you, dad. I'm, like, a cool adventurer now, and I got this moon sword. And <laughs> um, So it was pretty funny, and a, a lot of the, the party kind of had, like, a closure thing. Um before like the next big horrible apocalypse thing yeah. came. Mm -hmm. um, the the one thing, and, and this is this is kind of an aside, but like I had a lot of NPCs. Granted, there was a lot more at the very end, but that was kind of like here's your big battle, and you hired all these people and like got this big force, and you went and attacked them. So you don't really need as much player interaction with like those outside of like small little things. But there was like three major NPCs, uh, and later four in the game and the not a lot of interaction between them happened and that was mostly due to like the party dynamic and it wasn't the fault of any of the players or the dm or whatever it's just kind of like no one really pushed it um and so like I, I had like a bunch of stuff that they could do and i kind of felt like that kind of sucks that we didn't get to explore these characters I, more yeah. Like, I, I tended in that game to leave my interactions as, like, hey, I hang out with this NPC for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, it's kind of like, yeah. there was a lot of other stuff going on that I, I don't think it... Uh, what's, that, like, a good word for it? Like, it, it would have added to the story um, and made the campaign kind of run longer... But I don't think by not including them, like, too much was lost. I mean, yeah, there's still something I, lost. Like, but... I, I, to, in, in fairness, I interacted with two of them a fair bit. The time wizard, like, yep. came friends with, with her. Then I, I came friends with a goblin, dated her. <laughs> yep, yep, dating the goblin. Goblin and uh, a, a Tiefling joined uh, and uh, ended up being like, hey, you know what? I'm into that Goblin. And yeah. so, like, th there was a pretty good Goblin relationship. Tiefling was um, too scary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and the Time Bunny, like, my biggest thing I felt bad is because she was, like, this yeah. super ancient, possibly immortal, like, wizard who kind of, like, blew up a bunch of stuff. And so, like, was super depressed and, like, locked himself away in, like, a hyperbolic time chamber. And, you know, the party, like, reawakened her. And then, like, oh, the world is still all screwed up. Oh, all my people are still dead. And so that was kind of a, a, a plot line that I was hoping would happen to try and, like... Because basically the character needs therapy, even though they're, yeah. like, super old, <clears throat> right? And granted, you're not going to get that in a and d adventure... But, like, even, you know, like, on a personal note, right, even just talking about things can help. If you talk to a professional person, obviously you get better mm -hmm. help, right? But I was I was kind of hoping for a little bit more interaction. But I think it still mostly came out fine in the end because you have that narrative ending that you can kind of wrap things up on. Yeah. So while the, the three, like, helper NPCs... You know, there's only a little bit I did with that, um, though they could come back again later uh, if I did the 20-year the gap. Besides the goblin, they will, because... will be very old. Yeah, the goblin might be around as, like, a shopkeeper or something, but, like, they're not going to be an adventurer she, anymore, right? She's going to be, like, in her 40s. Yeah, 30s or goblin. 40s. Um, like, they probably have a whole family now, because goblin. Yeah, it's going to be awkward. Uh, very awkward if um, if Yutsuko comes back. Uh, but like the other people, they could easily still be adventurers. And yeah. uh, the 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 time bunny, um, Velus, I believe. Um, th I think there was um, a bit more post like post game yeah. narrative wrap up with them. Um, so it'd be interesting to. See It'll, what could develop from that character. It would also in like... be interesting because she went 
off and like wandered the world for a bit with a dumb gnome. Yeah. And a depressed oh. Kitsune. Yep. Yeah, they kind of went and did their own little thing for a bit. Um, but like, there, there's a lot of stuff that, uh, especially if you uh, are using the same world. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, I will. I will just say, eventually, one day after I, I run in this setting I made and need to test, uh, I am going to return to that and I'm going to reuse some things from the Underdark game. But use them to fuck with your second dragon war. <laughs> yeah, because that's basically how it ended. So <laughs> a little bit of 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 background. Uh, in in the the timeline the players are playing in, it's been like five hundred and thirty or five hundred fifty years or so since a big huge war with dragons and their like minions kind of thing happened. And that was kind of like a. Um, not really like a cold war because like there was it wasn't like actual like attacking or whatever but it was kind of like that ceasefire tension where like are they going to do something are they not and because of the events that took place in that game which was a whole bunch of people being wiped out by a bunch of undead because the, the lich summoned a bunch of undead that weakened the like the border states um, where they they had enough people there in power that it'd be really annoying to try and like take them over but like half or more of that was like wiped out because of all this undead stuff so now it's a whole lot easier for them and they've had a big military buildup so they just kind of sweeped across like half of the continent being like hey all this land it's ours now we stopped the undead what have you done about it and so that's kind of where the narrative part of that story ended and where it could be picked up. And you could have, like, multiple types of scenarios all within this same timeline, just picking different parts of the world, which is what I like to do, like, with this setting, personally. Yeah. I will tell you briefly what I will do after the stream, kind of. Sure. I does Tantus that... have anything to, yeah, to talk Tantus about? Yeah, does Tantus have anything to speak Because um... you've ended long campaigns. I have. It was, um... I feel like the two campaigns that I can talk about that were very long campaigns that I had a very successful ending. Well, I can talk about three. Big well, it's Grinding Gears, too. Grinding Gears, though, I didn't end that. Um, we yeah. kind of we pushed Joe to end it, and he had a pretty good ending uh, that narratively worked. Um, you know, it might have not been the result any of us were looking for, but we gave him what our plan was ahead of time, and I think that helped him come up with what he felt like the result of what we did was. We were going to do the old uh, bag of holding inside a portable hole trick because we were in a pocket dimension that shouldn't have been directly connected with like things like the astral plane and stuff, you know. We were in like, we were, it seemed like reality, but it really wasn't reality kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Um, kind of broke reality. Yeah. It, it's sort of like the result of these deity, a very powerful deity splitting into multiple deities created basically its own galaxy almost. Probably surprisingly, I, I would not be amazed that like, there probably wasn't a lot in that galaxy honestly. It was big neat looking, there was like space travel which made sense for like technology based god powers but you know, maybe that was the point of it and there was just a lot of space, you know maybe yeah. there weren't as many planets as like you know, it made it out to be uh, you know, still even like a couple hundred planets would have been a lot, but that might have been all there was. Um, so it seemed like it was an impressive thing, but it might not have been. And there there might have been issues with it, you know, if you're talking about like God powers. But, you know, it was Joe's narrative. So I was like, whatever, you know, honestly, at that point in time, it was it, it was it, it, I understood the concept of it wasn't a terrible narrative. There was some like crazy parts of it. Anyway, so um had a pretty good ending i think you know where like everything ended and might begin again kind of thing um uh one of our players was like uh i'll take over for the deity and then the that's other, right and the other players were like uh we're just gonna fuck off back to like you know home ish yeah we're like <laughs> uh, like for me i was like well i'm just can we send me there honestly like you know and then like uh you know you were like well you know i'm I'm, I, can I be like reincarnated as what I am now there? And he's like, sure. 
You know, so we, the both of us kept our kind of like physical forms, and then like I, I got buff form. Though, yeah, you got buff. Because I was like really weak and like scrawny, and I'm like I want to be buff. So I'm, and like, apparently, uh, Swift was in a coma or something there. Uh, so yeah. We we you know successfully woke up Swift. Like Swift would wake up, and we're like, find us here. You know. Yeah, and and they wished for the adventure to continue, so <laughs> we got immortality. <laughs> yeah. It, it was kind of a cool ending. I thought. Yeah. I thought. For, for like the the troubles and bumps and you know things that was in that campaign, it had a pretty good ending. It's sort of like we ended up in a place where, um, you know, we were powerful. We weren't super oh, the most powerful, and we were. Um, I guess the way to say it is like we had been on a lot of adventures already, but like this would be you know it's a new world to explore and it's different. Like maybe we've sort of been to other planets but we haven't really been to other planets you know we really didn't explore a lot of worlds you know it's like well we kind of were to these places and you know things like that and in technically in Faerun there are um there's spell jamming if you if you look at it so there are other planets we we can visit them eventually or something like that there's a lot to do you know and I feel like that's it helps it um something like I think my first example that I can use after this is, like, M- Madness of the Land. I just kind of ended that. Because, unfortunately, we had so many issues with that campaign, especially later on. Narratively, it got into, like, a hole, almost. And there wasn't a lot I could do to fix that. I actually sat around and thought about it heavily, about what I could do to fix that, possibly, still. <laughs> and I just said to myself... I think I made too many mistakes early on. Like, I like my story. I like my world. I like things like that. And so that's why I was like, I just have to end it, and I'm going to revisit the world eventually. That's what I'm going to do with it. Also, I'm going to maybe, like, you know, actually do it as the appropriate uh, world type, which is it's supposed to be a uh, Pathfinder game. Um, Mm -hmm. But because, um, you know, 5e is big, and that was what people were doing, I decided to try to convert it to 5e. It didn't convert well no it, it's hard to convert pathfinder to 5e yeah con- lore and the mechanics of how the worlds work as well it also i i will say like i it, it's fairly easy to create monsters in pathfinder and balance them they have a really good monster creation system not so easy in 5e no it's not you can guess that's going to make a lot of custom monsters it gets a little bit it's a lot of play testing it, it's it's you have to kind of guesstimate it and <clears throat> Like, I just, you know, assumed a lot and hoped for the best. There is a chart, uh, it, it might be on the DMG, for creating monsters, but it's, like, pretty vague, and they don't cover, like, abilities. It's just like, hey, what's their to hit bonus? What's their AC? How much damage can they do in a single round? that roughly puts them onto this kind of CR category because it's just looking at like a, how much damage can the players do because of that 50% like hit chance thing. And it probably has some like average like damage that party should be doing that. It's like calculating for that. Um, but you can find it on five E tools, which is a good, you good can. site. Uh, and you can also like input some of your things. Like when I, I I've made some, some creatures and like, I usually just take a stat block and just, like, swap powers around, and that usually is fine. You, yeah. you, you tend to not make things stronger when doing that. More often, you make things weaker. Like, uh, I, I took a fire giant, and I gave it the uh, skeleton template. So it actually ended up being weaker than a fire giant because it lost certain, like, resistances and abilities and stuff. So it was basically the same. Um, not that the party had any bludgeon weapons to take advantage of that, um, but like it, it's mostly guessing. Um, but I've done it enough now that I I'm pretty confident in my monster creation. But not everyone has the same like time and luxury, right? And also, like honestly, this was like a few years ago now. So <clears throat> yeah, like, my experience has gotten better with Five E, certainly than that. Like I had had a few like big ish campaigns in Five E, but nothing. Madness was, like, the first real, really big 5e directly campaign, you know, as I'd always been Pathfinder and stuff like that. 
Um, then the campaigns that I had end, of course. I, I've talked about those campaigns. Legacies of Cain, Records of Evil. Records of Evil was easy to end, I think, because <laughs> they had a goal in mind, and they did it. Honestly, they have basically... Like, it, they, are, they basically were doing the omen. You know, that was what it was. You know, how, like, you know, they get the son of Satan, except this was the son of Asmodeus that is, like, yeah. also Asmodeus. So it's, yeah. you know, uh, at the same yeah. time. And they yeah. got that. I think you yeah. did a narrative ending for that. Yeah, it's mostly narrative. Both, both, well, I gotta be honest, like, for Vampire, you have to do a narrative ending for something. Yes, for va- Vampire, yeah. it has to be narrative. It's not a combat system to begin with so having a big combat doesn't logically make sense you could have a combat around there but it just it's not the thing you do for for it um for 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 records there really wasn't combat a lot of times anyway here and there occasionally but not a lot so like narrative was easy to do like I was like, there was totally combat going on related to this, but I don't need to roll it out because, like, it would be a hassle. Time. Yeah. yeah. Like, with mine, you guys had a huge adventuring party. You had, like, four or five different teams, and there was a dragon that was flying overhead, burning things. I'm not going to roll all that. It's no, just, just the dragon. dead die. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely the same kind of thing of like you just sometimes the narr like the it, the actual roles it's neat but it's just not worth it to do no, because it's not so it, much. It, yeah, like it, when you have big epic endings, definitely narrative is the better way to go. Yeah, you can still have like like <clears throat> I, I'm gonna tell you this. This is something that I do actually like. Uh, like is that um. Carrion Crown, which, you know, Carrion Crown, issues with. Hmm. I like its ending. And it's a combat ending. Um, its ending, uh, spoilers if you don't know about it, is, like, you end up, like, having to, you know, like, you've kind of beaten the Whispering Way, technically. You know, you've fo- foiled their plans up until now, but they're still trying something. You know, like, Technically, at the end of book five, you sort of foiled their plans. They're, they're, the thing of Carrion Crown is they're trying to make an artifact called the Carrion Crown, uh, which is... What? Yeah. Weird. Which the uh, idea of it is, let's free the Whispering Tyrant from his thing. But um, at the end of book five, you rescue a man who is basically descended from Whispering Tyrant when he was flesh and blood, in which they were going to use him... Uh, to basically be like a vessel to like remove the lich's spirit and make a new body from the from its imprisonment. That was the idea of it. You know, that's a cool kind of sounding idea. It's like, well, we can't break the prison, but we can just take your soul out of there and give you a new body, which then you can turn into your undead form. You know, which mm-hmm. is pretty uh, nasty. Uh, you rescue that guy. They don't have him. So like, it, there is a final boss, and there's this like cool like ascent up a tower. And, like, you can defeat the final boss who's... He, he does the old villain trick of, I will just wear it myself in order to try to summon my master. And it doesn't really work and turns him into, like, a horrible undead monstrosity that is actually a unique type of undead, which is really kind of Ooh. neat looking, uh, that you could use in your own campaigns. It's like a... It's like it's a different type of lich he becomes. Uh, because it doesn't work. Yeah. But then you battle him, and this epic battle at the top of the tower, and, like, it feels like a big climactic thing, you know? I think that's the thing about it. It feels big and climactic. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, go ahead. And that's, that, that's, the, that's your battle kind of ending. You can have them, but you have to set them up kind of thing. You, you have yeah. to have that set up. It's what I did at the end of my one game, the... The original game with Badger. Yeah. Um, that was a good battle. Is it, you, you had the mechanical battle, but outside of that, you also had the narrative bigger battle yeah. going on. <clears throat> um, because, honestly, spoilers, how do you guys... The unlikelihood in the unlikely nature, how do you guys died, 
that half dragon was still gonna be fucking murdered. He yeah. was he was not living. <laughs> there was an, there was an army like yeah. sieging the the fort, you know. If we had failed, we might have done enough to. Um, he he was dead. Away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in in, in allowing the the actual big epic fight at the end led to some really cool stuff that might it makes me love that character even more because you just jumped off a tower yeah <laughs> that, man. yeah oh oh you have to you have to replay it because i i actually put two characters in the last battle you did play my, two characters in the last battle my first character did not mesh at all with the party god so, no oh, right. that's the fault of maybe one character so yes. so I'm like, all right. Well, I wanted to try this class out, but I guess that's not going to happen. Oh, actually, it was it was a multi class that because of the race I was playing, it was very mad. Yeah. Like multi ability score demand, and so it was like pretty not fun. And then we that was when I was working on another class, which was yeah, witch. We haven't and we hadn't finished witch at that point. We hadn't finished the witch class that would have worked for it. Yeah. So I still I end up like okay, well I'll, I'll play the one that's done, which was the black witch, which is kind of kind of necromancy feeling, but not actually. It's just kind of like you like, do dark powers sometimes. I, I view it as more of like in terms of which because witches are kind of very naturey, uh, more leaning on the decay side of nature. Yeah. They're not technically evil, though some of them are, like, possibly seen as evil, though really they're not. They're just like, I use the darker energies yeah, of my witchcraft. It's like the thing of, you need to d decay things to make new life, that kind of shit. Yeah. So, so I was, I had that character, which was the Kitsune, because of course it is. And then my, my other character came back, which we had reclassed as a Silver Witch, which is the, the fighty one, which is yeah. basically what I was trying to do. I was doing a weird <laughs> You're uh, doing paladin sorcerer. sorcerer paladin, yeah. Yeah, and and it, the the silver witch is kind of like a pex blade, um, with with better spell casting basically. Um, so I, I think their damage potential isn't as good as which, like a straight hex blade. Which, which kind of did become the stand in for stand in for warlock because we don't really allow warlock in that world. Well, the, the warlock in the regular timeline is fine. It's yeah. just, in, it's not a very good class. In certain things, we were talking Warlock. about Warlock. Warlock has issues, but that's a yeah. long discussion for another time. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a different, deeper discussion. I'll actually maybe um, add that onto the list, talking about There you go, more. Warlock, 5e. Warlock, not what, great. What, what went 5e, wrong? Uh, what went, yeah, what went wrong? Because honestly, um, uh, yeah. just as a side note, we were having a discussion on this, but without getting into any details. I was looking at 3.5 Warlock, and it's really good and fun and yeah. neat looking. I, I played a 5e Warlock, or not 5e, uh, a 3.5 Warlock in a video game. You know, video games take some liberties and stuff, but I remember it being just as capable as, like, full casters. Yeah. It was just different. Yeah. Um, but the reason why I'm doing a bit of explaining mm. is because uh, the other character came back for the, the final battle, because I mean, might have been down someone. Because they we died were... and didn't want to come back. Yeah, yeah. We they didn't want to make a new character. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we we're down. Uh, a character died and created a, a whole nother problem for a different game. Yeah, but but they were like, well, I don't want to make another character Lynn for like died, one or two games. Yeah, Lynn's character died. I forgot that Lynn's character died. And that was yep. like kind of understandable because there was one session left. Yeah, so it's kind of like, I understand that. So I'm like, well, I can just bring this character back and just, like, redo the level. So so to, to get the... Now you have the context. So Badger, the, the, the half-dragon boss we were fighting, like, went to, like, a dragon for me. He was like, blah, 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 I'm a big dragon now. And was, like, flying around being a dick, and we kind of couldn't attack him. So then the character I was first playing, who I forget their original name, but they, they were Yin was their, uh, their, like, real name, like, true yeah. name. Uh, they reveal to the party that they've been a dragon this whole time and they take their dragon form and so they have this this dragon fight or whatever. I think you breath weaponed me and I like, took down to like single digit HP. You, you got like, breath weapon. Oh no! <laughs> so then I like hid behind like the the like the tower and like I, I think I healed myself a little bit because I think I had one heal uh, and I just upcasted it and then the I think I got a heal from 
our, our druid who wasn't there. They were basically an NPC at that point. Yeah. We got yeah. some heals from that. And so my, I was waiting for my breath attack to recharge. And I, it recharged on, like, the last turn. So, like, the badger is like, I'm going to, like, Tantus was like, I'm going to jump off and stab it because it was, like, you know, down on the ground. Yeah. And then my, my silver dragon used the breath attack because I'm like, hey, this is within 60 feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, the narrative ending was badger was jumping off to go and like stab this dragon while this jet of icy cold air is all around him like yeah, I wrote hitting it down. the dragon on the yeah. ground <laughs> and just did basically yeah. like the, the link sword drop into the thing that uh, you did yes, the dark yes. soul you asylum demon you did the dark souls yeah i did the dark souls yeah and and that was how we we killed it so it was a really like cool like narrative ending of this like jump off the tower icy dragon breath all around and like ah and you know it was good it was a cool ending i really had, enjoyed that ending had i had a little more time to bake that ending um i was originally gonna do that ending in edgewind oh um but i didn't have the time to prep that unfortunately that's fair um <clears throat> another good long campaign ending that i have to talk about which i might have talked about some point in the past um that i just thought of now that ended up being more narrative was um so final couple of sessions uh it's a long campaign we're going against like the four fury deities so it's basically like uh uh it's <clears throat> Faerun, it's like malar uh umberly um the ice one which i can't remember and like the storm one which is like talos or something tempest. uh tempest i i, I i'm hard to remember all my Faerun deities I can remember Umberly because she's the bitch queen. Yeah. Uh, and Malara was like the the one I remember because it was the That's first one. Animal fought. or something. Yeah. We we fought like an army of werewolves and defeated the Avatar Malar. Um, Umberly, we were fighting against Slarknakel, which is a twentieth level wi uh, wizard who turned into a sorcerer because wizard was stupid because we're like where the fuck he's keeping a spell book. And we're just like <laughs> he's a sorcerer now. It's a twentieth level, but he's a kraken. He's a twentieth level sorcerer kraken. Oh, so, God. who's a chosen of Umberley. So he's like, you know, he was kind of like a, a big villain for us. And then we uh, we were almost our own villains with trying to use the Ring of Winter to freeze all the Faerun, you know, um, which Oops. I froze hell then. Um, because there was a convenient portal to one of the Nine Hells. And I'm like, well, this ring is compelling me to freeze a plane. Hey, hell! <laughs> Oh, you're why the eighth level of hell is frozen. Because no, no, fault. I chose the fourth level of hell and also froze oh. that now. Which well, is they, they just moved it down a couple. Yeah, levels. that was one of the the fiery levels, though. I'm like, you know, fiery level, you can be frozen now. So yeah. I also pissed off a lot of devils. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, devils are jerks. And then uh, we discovered there was like a group of weird orcs on the moon that were using the Tarrasque to live on the moon. Because uh, they basically had it captured and were harvesting it constantly for its blood for water and, you know, its flesh for, you know, meat. And what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> They're really screwed up. They're really screwed up. The thing is, because it's like a horrible, dark, ancient beast, they were all slowly <laughs> mutating in weird ways. It's not good to do that kind of thing. To like, not a farm, dude. Don't eat mythical creatures. Don't eat a magical monster. They were living on the moon. What else could they have? <laughs> it's just a moon. There was no water or anything. It was like it was like our moon, except it had like a little bit of an atmosphere, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, the the last couple of sessions were freeing the Tarrasque, uh, briefly gaining control of it um, to fight a, a massive army, uh, then deciding to. Uh, accidentally getting into a deal to become the chosen of Tempest, because uh, he tricked me. Um, How dare he? I know. So I was like the chosen of evil deity. Using said magic power combined with a, uh, because it's they're spell jamming, and we decided to install on our ship, which we had turned into kind of a brief spaceship, an asteroid destroying cannon. Uh, okay. Combine that with the power of uh, uh, divine energy that I channeled all of it into there to blow up our moon. So well, we blew up one. You know. Well, the Tarrasque flew off into space uh, to be seen oh, yeah. in another adventure completely because that's another adventure we had where we were on Galarian and it was a different timeline where, uh, hey, do you know that Starfall get is? Yeah, that Starfall that destroyed most of the world? Guess what? It was the Tarrasque because it lavos the planet. <laughs> <laughs> that was an entire storyline that that's what happened. Yeah, which oh. we were at fault for it. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, then discovering that what we had done had basically weakened four deities, 
and that our good friend Slarthnikel, who we left in the Far Realm, attacking Dagon and an Umbral Blot, which is an intelligent uh, sphere of annihilation, uh, the three of them had merged, and then he took all those deities' power. So we ended up having to go to the Far Realm, which there was basically a planet-sized Slarthnikel that was merged with Dagon, merged with this Umbral Blot at its core, which is like a black hole it was using to power itself. Um, yeah. And so we had to, like a weird game. Yeah, so we had to, like crawl on the body and like face against like because we couldn't fight that thing. It was too big. Like, fuck. We had to like we need a Death Star, like a small moon. Or so something. what we decided to do is we like no crawled moon. on it and we figured out a way to basically like what happens if we destabilize its black hole core, <laughs> which is exactly what we did. We basically had it like suck itself into its own like sphere of annihilation. Oh, so you killed a moon. Yeah. Monster. So you did Dead Space three. Yeah, we Dead Space three. We you, you fought and killed a moon. <laughs> yeah, we fought and killed a moon by having its and black hole. Plot. And then like, there's like, well, you've got all this divine energy left over from like the four deities he he had consumed. Um, guess what? You're all gods now. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm still gonna put on sunglasses. I'm gonna go be Zeus because I like because like you know we probably like also killed we're some other be gods. Zeus and fuck everything. I kind of was already doing that. I was a pirate captain. <laughs> you know. I, I had my main woman. Uh, she was on my ship and she was a gunslinger and just would kick my ass like if, if I pissed her <laughs> off. But you know, some of us are here and there you know, and she's like, you know, but now you know I, I was totally like, I'm, I'm bringing my wife with me, my, my su pseudo wife with me to be God, so we, we, brought, we, we could like bring some NPCs. And that's the origin of guess whose origin it was? A certain uh, character. Um... Uh, oh, Fedor. Uh, forget the name. Fedor. It was the Grinding Gears person. Yep, that was the origin Fedor, of Fedor. Fedor, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but Nathan, go. god of, uh, uh, can a good god of pirates. Can a good question mark? <laughs> god of pirates. I, I mean, you know. <laughs> I try. Some, some, sometimes to do good. Bad people have to die. Uh, look, I also, like, apparently... Sometimes to do good, you have to freeze a layer of hell. We also went by the alternate, uh, the sort of timeline thing where sometimes, uh, Tempest can also be Grumsh in Faerun. Uh, I think they kind of separated out more now, but he, back then it was, like, rumored to be the same thing. Uh, so we got to also fight, like, Avery Orc in existence with Raw oh. Moon when we blew it up. So now there's, like, <laughs> a few works left over that didn't follow us because it was like, you know, the 5% that didn't follow Grumsh stayed on uh, Toral. Just blew up the moon. With all the orcs, that, most of the orcs that existed. Just blew up the moon. <laughs> they were fighting the Tarask. <laughs> no take one that, likes the take, moon anyway. Take that moon. <laughs> there were more moons. But you see, but that's a campaign moon. end. That is a ridiculous campaign end, and we only, we really had, like, you know, sort of a final battle against a, like, an incarnation of death, which, um, I got the Tarrasque to eat it, eat it, there, quite literally. <laughs> the, the, uh, there was a campaign and that was fairly long, I think it was, like, level 7 or 8, it might have been longer than armor, it was a long time ago. The, our, our final battle was against a big old mean demon, demony man. <laughs> Who like tried to fuck off through a portal, and my lovely paladin boy was like, "I'm going into that portal," and apparently I just became Doom Slayer and just slaughtered the lands there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do. That, that, that's an image I do like, though. It's like he's kind of become Doom Slayer, you know? Uh, man. We should talk about our games that happened. We yeah. Well, one of them we did talk about because, one you know. Of them we yeah. Did. Yeah. 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 Um, also, one of the characters summoned a demon. Uh, yeah. A Marilyn. Very sexy demon. A very, very hot, evil demon. I rolled lady. new 100. Character wasn't into it. Yeah, she's too demon y, apparently. Too much demon. Uh, yeah. And uh, they're probably coming back in 100 years. That's uh, not my problem, though. That's Cell's problem. And that's that's pretty much it. We pretty much talked about everything else that happened yeah. in that Friday game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't think we have anything on Saturday still. No. Did anybody have a Sunday game? No, it got canceled. Ah. Again. Okay. 
Um, nothing Monday. I don't have anything Monday. We had Star Wars. We had Star on Tuesdays. Wars. Yeah, Star Wars on Tuesday. Who went on a chase to find a ship. And oh, You bone. know where the ship is, and you all wrote, like, fucking garbage. That we entire session. <laughs> and I just, like, bam, 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 crit after crit. <laughs> You we rolled so bad. We were very bad at rolling that session. I uh, we, we went to a, a, a freaking spaceport. It's like, all right, let's just go around and talk to some people. You know, we'll try and like be on the, the down low because it's it's Kessel, it's it's Empire controlled spice. You know, thugs or whatever. And one of the players is like, I'm gonna go threaten this dude and pull my gun on him. <laughs> and then like, you know, you could have scratched the stormtroopers, but he rolled a twenty. Versus your nineteen deception. Yeah, not twenty. I'm really then, deception and, too. I rolled. I rolled mediocre. That, that situation could have been even more diffused, but someone shot the stormtroopers. Yeah, uh, I, with, I ducked out with of there. real guns, by the way, yeah, not with a blaster, fun. with actual guns. So you can't hide all of the evidence of what happened. Yeah, like, uh, so, like um... if we were going to be arrested, I actually had kind of a plan for that, because I was going to be like, hey, look, uh, yeah, we, you know, um, just be, like, honest, like, we do jobs for people, you know, we don't always ask questions, and sometimes there are certain things in it, and, you know, you guys are working with the people here in Kessel, you should know that, you know, when people do jobs for things, they don't always want to, like, you know, tell you everything. I, I think if you guys got arrested, the Gungan wasn't getting out of that. I'll, I'll be honest. Before the troopers had gotten shot, they were just going to ask you for a bribe and then fuck off. Oh, man, I would have solely given them a bribe. They, they would have just asked for a bribe. Because they're, they're dumb conscripts yeah. that yeah. think they have power. Yeah, and and they're probably in a place that's very, like, crime-ridden. They're not yeah, trying to maintain it. They're on Kessel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so so I I left after the the, the murder. You um, left and delivered a package. I yeah. delivered a package to the the, the Imperial Embassy, and, and then when I came back, the 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 space force was all locked down. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? By the way, my character's dressed as an Imperial pilot, so I just walk <laughs> into the Imperial space fort as an Imperial pilot, and the Imperial stormtroopers are like, yeah, there was like an attack and like some murder and stuff, and I proceeded to help them find the bodies that the party had hidden. <laughs> and then, after I like helped them out like halfway through, it's like, all right, and I pat them on the shoulder and like, you got this from here. I got stuff I need to do. And then I board our ship, which uh, is not Imperial, by the way. No, <laughs> it's just a it's not Imperial. It's just a normal <laughs> ship. And uh, the party's like, all right, well, we kind of got some stuff. Big explosion happens. It's like, hey, we're leaving the planet now. <laughs> Uh, oh, they no. may have delivered a plasma bomb. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't in the other session. That was, no. That was the first half. That was the first half of the session. Yep. Where we failed. It got, it got worse. <laughs> it got worse. Uh, then we went to an Imperial spy location, and, um, you know, things... They... they didn't even tell us I... to screw off. We hailed I... them, like, twice, and it's like... No, I well, actually... Um, messed up slightly with my description, and this may clarify a bit. So that is was actually meant to be a rebel listening post that was captured, but it was lost in my DM notes. Uh -oh. And then I was like, well, shit, I don't remember. Oh, that would have actually maybe worked a little bit better. <clears throat> yeah, so like... that was on. That was my fault. You know. My yeah, because but... like we, there's like okay, so there's like these listening posts. Like I guess one of them could have like information on ships that traveled through here. So we like this one looks big enough to like dock with, and it has life signs. We like we like hailed it. There's nothing, so we like scan it. Well, there's people on it. We can detect life signs, so we hail it again. We don't get a response. They didn't even tell us to screw off. This is Imperial space or whatever, or Imperial facility. They say nothing. So it's like, well, screw it. We're gonna dock. You know, maybe maybe they're in trouble or something. That was my logic. I don't know if I said it out loud. So we dock with them. We enter, and like a little like column hollow communicator kind of thing pops up or something. And it's like, this is Imperial base or whatever. 
you need to leave. It's like, well, you should have told us that before we docked. Also, screw you, Imperials. Yeah, that was on me, the combination of me being slightly underprepped and also really tired that day. Yeah, it happens. I, I have screwed up but so I don't, many times. I don't think it was a big enough scrub to ruin anything. No. It, it kind of makes sense, like, in hindsight, but I don't think it really detracted anything from the... Yeah, the, because the, that, that is specifically a listening post from the X-Wing games, because I'm just stealing shit from those. Hell yeah. I mean, there's plenty so of stuff. then they tried to murder us. They did, and they were pretty effective at shooting you. Apparently. A lot of 20s. <laughs> Um, yeah. those enemies are just like, so they're like a CR half normally. And I was just like, these guys are a little more elite. So I'll just give them their max HP of 20 and then give them a plus to their hit. Like give them a bonus plus one hit. Apparently... The dice decided these guys need to be the most elite people in the galaxy and just fucking they, shoot really effectively. They had, like, what, 15 AC? We missed so many times. Yeah, they're just... They're not... Like, it's the dice. It's my curse. As a DM, is I'll always roll amazing, and as a player, I'll always roll like garbage. Mm-hmm, yeah. I, I rolled so bad that entire session. It was just a session of everyone failing upwards. Upwards. Yep. <clears throat> that, was, yeah. that was basically the session. We failed and, upwards. And because I don't set DCs on uh, basic information that you need to progress, it was literally failing upwards. Yeah. So, but we we did, I think I did eventually get a decent roll. I think I got like a 19 at the very end. And it was like, hey, that evidence you found, that was planted. So it's like, oh, well, it's a trap. So we have the location of the, the ship we were looking for. Um, because getting a bigger ship is not easy, because uh, you either that, pay a lot of money, or that, you have to steal it. I thought it was very difficult to steal large ships. They have a lot of crew on them. Yeah. And so, we're, there's only, what, five, six of us? If there's, only, there's only six of you and a droid. Yeah, yeah. the droid's the non-combatant, even though it probably has, I mean, it, it can has the shock people, power. It can electroprod, and that's it. Yeah, it's not really a combatant. It's it's a it's an astromech droid. Yeah, he's there so, to help repair shit. So yeah. like we a, as players are pretty strong, but we can't take on a marine detachment as well as all the people who might have basic training with like pistols. Yeah. Yes, we would eventually die to attrition mm -hmm. if we yeah. attacked a, a ship by ourselves. Um, and we don't have. Uh, like uh, two million credits. Or no, you don't. I don't. I don't know how I can realist would ever be able to realistically give you that. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it could happen, uh, but like, it, it, not this early in the campaign. No, not I, this early. I, and it's sort you of like could, I, eventually you'll probably be able to buy a ship. Yeah, but not now. And I feel like you know, like like you know, a certain, a certain number of characters, you know, explaining level one. I feel like for me, it's sort of like I'm on my like. Fallen Order quest line of like you know like I gotta like reinvigorate my powers or something I don't know. You gotta reinvigorate your powers with your dead brother who you summoned. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's a thing that happens. <sighs> I'm gonna kill that ghost. Just so you know. I don't know yeah. how you're gonna kill do the that. crap out of it. Good luck. I, have, I mean, I do have forced ghost statistics, but that thing doesn't have actual statistics. Uh, I, it's it's it just, like it just comes back later. It, it's it's a familiar. It's an improved yeah, familiar. Yeah, it basically. just comes back. It's a familiar so that's kind of a dick. He's it a dick. Should have the some biggest hit dick. Like, oh my god! Some of them, you, you, the only worst thing you could do with that ability is in like a post Imperial era game, summoning the ghost of Palpatine. Yeah. You're like, stop, I'm Palpatine, baby. And somehow Palpatine returned as a ghost to sass you all. <laughs> yeah. No, I just thought of, um, I, I wasn't in this campaign, but I just will always remember someone was in a campaign where they had an infamiliar named Captain Insidious. Uh, oh, no. And it did imp things constantly. Oh, jeez. Because <laughs> it's an imp, and it's yeah. lawful evil. It's doing you its know, evil You know things. what I'm going to use the ghost to do? I'm going to use the ghost. The ghost is going to try to turn Cell to the dark side. 
Oh no! This is the ghost the one good character yeah. in the party. I mean, I mean, what honestly, gonna do? I mean, honestly, like he probably wants revenge on you know, like certain people that might be in the empire. So like yeah, you know, you know but he's like, you should use the dark have... side to do that. Yeah, That's the Vader may have you know forced your ghost of your brother to stay in a shitty temple for all eternity. And I freed him using like you know force powers. <laughs> For all he knows, he might come back there powers. afterwards. He's like, you know, like... That's where he goes when he dies as a ghost and you have to resummon him. <laughs> he just goes back to that temple and he's like, ah, crap, not again. <laughs> it's like, you really have to stop getting into trouble, brother. You stop getting me killed, asshole. <laughs> I stop didn't get you... the ghost and I'll stop killing him. <laughs> My ship, keep your ghost on. When you get your own ship, you can have as many ghosts in it as you want. Look, when we steal a really big ship, it'll be all oh of our ships, because we all help God. steal it. Then I can have as yeah. many ghosts as I want. Also, it's bigger, it's, it's, so I can keep them farther away. I'm excited away. for you to get this ship, because it's like a weird ship, too. Oh. Um, but yeah, we, we found uh, planted you know, evidence. Yeah, you know, we found out that it was planted. And we're planning, we, we're planning a spring the trap now. Yeah, because yeah. um, it's kind of like we just upgraded the hyperdrive too, so the ship is twice as fast. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we can just jump right I, I there. I think your plan was that the people who are human, yes, will dress up in stolen armor, and the engineer who has an imperial officer uniform is gonna like distract. Or something. Yeah. I think that's the plan well, you decided we, we have, on. We have codes, so we're going to act as we like we were a too. resupply yeah. for them. But and, you know, we'll, because we'll, we'll jump, we're we're in a YT twenty four hundred, which is a Krellian yeah. cargo ship. Yeah. So we look like a cargo ship, right? I mean, it's slightly modded, but like at a glance, you wouldn't really tell. So it's like we have imperial codes. We can jump in. It'll just take us like uh, two days to get there. Hmm. Hopefully, because the the boss villain who was in charge of the team that we murdered, they flew away in some like upgraded uh tie tie, tie defender tie defender which i don't like I'm, I'm not trying to be like a super star wars nerd but i don't remember when they came they in. um it, it depends on the source True. they <coughs> uh they existed before the, the battle of endor so oh did yes. they okay yeah they were um, rare if we talk rebels where they were doing the tie defender project that was being developed around the same time the first Death Star was being built. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, um, they were mostly done during that time. Like, granted, like, um, it was one of those things is like, the facility where they were building them was destroyed because that was on Lothal. But honestly, they already had the, probably, blueprints for them, so they could just make yeah. another facility somewhere else, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she escaped uh, with, in, or in a TIE Defender, um... Only Tantus's character knows it, uh, but I I know that character from my backstory, and basically, because it it was kind of cool though, because um, the the my character um, uh, Ravshai, it was kind of like, kind of done with the parties like, oh well, what should we do? And uh, we could go there, or we could just not. I was just like, I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna get in the ship, and we're just gonna start flying out of this this asteroid field or whatever, and so. Tantus's character, I don't remember your name. Several. 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 Was talking to the, the, the party. I'm like, this is, this is, you know, probably pretty important, and we have the element of surprise. And then, like, connected the dots of, like, wait a minute, these people were, like, some kind of commandos, and they had very similar looking armor to our pilot. Wait <laughs> on, and... <that> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so kind of like approach them and like I'm not gonna ask about your past or whatever, um, and basically just like I'm pretty sure that you were one of these people, you know. And then I'm like, uh, Rav just dropped. It's like yeah, the person who was in charge is this is their name, you know, their their uh, special ops commander. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of like that was kind of cool. I think it's the thing that, as much as like Sivril is uh, in between light and dark he still like has a little bit of that like base Jedi mentality of like it's he, it's the more reason that he's kind of like put that area is that like the world is not like you know black and white, black and white. 
thing. It, it's very gray, and so that's why, like, he believes that the force should be like used in a gray way because it, you know, that's his kind of philosophy. He's kind of taken on, but he also believes that like you can still be decent to other people kind of thing you know like that that we're all in it together and though like you know e e people do actions for different reasons the people as a whole you know deserve to be treated well and i think that's what it is it's sort of like he he he, he almost has a philosophy of like good on the big picture you know um which is yeah. Uh, I guess an interesting way to look at it, you know. I mean, I'm I have new force powers. I'm personally of the opinion the only thing is you use the force for us to seize. <laughs> Which is a dark side power. Look, it gives you hit points. I keep taking lightning powers, so like you know, I'm gonna yeah, take oh, hey, people. I I just learned how to throw lightsabers at people you and did. also levitate them it's with really my mind. A little weird. Your life is also cool. red, which is also weird. So uh, I mean, fine. I built it. It's what I had. I don't care. It's red. What? It, obviously, you, you it, like can't even <laughs> see its color because you're colorblind. I I don't. You don't see color. I don't think I do. I mean, I I might see that it's a weird like shade because it's like yeah, it would be a weird forcey. shade. You you wouldn't um see its actual color. Yeah. That's mechanically, how that power works. Yeah, because I have weird force vision. Um, and uh, I think it, it's going to really like, suck for like a power upgrade, but I think on my next level up, I'm going to take the I don't have to sleep ever again power and the detect auras power, which is different than foresight. Detect so my, aura is, is basically detect magic item. Yeah, which I'm kind of surprised I don't have, but in the <laughs> Star Wars 5e one, they got rid of ritual casting. They did. Which is, uh, like, a little weird. weird. And I might bring it back, because honestly, it's not that big of a deal. I just have to go through and mark what spells get it. Yeah. Which is a lot of work for me, because there's, there's a lot of spells. Well, a lot of them are really just one-to-one -one copies. It's um, it so when you get to the tech ones are the really weird ones. I mean, fireball is a tech power. Yeah, there's but there's like some weird tech ones that I have. Yeah. I'd have to make a decision on. Yeah, but like I think some of the really easy ones, like identify or detect yeah, magic or stuff enough. like that. Yeah. Itemize, fucking that's <laughs> obviously ritual cast. Uh, like... Yeah. Uh, um, itemize. I will say I have made the decision that uh, Buccaneers is taking one more week off because um, right now. Um, there, I have one good option for a person that I've found. Again, I think I talked about some people. There's like a couple more that I can talk to about it, maybe. But like, what a really good option is a free domain. Now, granted, I could include them in after a couple of sessions. Like, I thought it would be very easy to like have it right away. But we can get to maybe like stuff related to petitioning uh, the Hurricane King first. And then kind of like skip, skip off a few weeks before you'd be like, now we can recruit some people because we, you know, we're not involved with this directly. Because you kind of like, status. yeah, you, you, you're, you're trying for this as soon as you arrive in port because you want to like get on the ball on that. And so you don't have as much time yeah. usually for the other, like, you know, recruiting people and stuff. So yeah. then we can kind of leave the, oh, we're getting a new player off until May. Um. Which, again, like, I'm considering just doing that. Uh, like, there's, like, I might, I might just do that, honestly. I, I might talk to that person and see if they want to do that. And then if, if they'll take that, then, you know, maybe I'll just go for that option. Because uh, yeah. uh, I... Taking off, like, a month and a half is a lot. Yeah, I, I can't take off more, but I can take off one more week, uh, honestly. I think I can do that. And I think uh, we were saying that we, I could have one of the NPCs assist you. One of the, the PCs that are basically NPCs that are your level, so, like, Sandra or something, yeah. I could just do that. Because um, yeah. again, like I, I think at the end of the other thing, we I said like there's the ones that are at your level, the ones that are two levels low, and the other ones that are half your level. Um, the half your level will tend to have NPC classes, but there's a couple of them on board the ship too. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, so that's the kind of the stuff I'll take care of. Um, so and then we did have Children of Wrath. We did have Wrath, <clears throat> which uh, Cas found his father. Cas found his dad. Uh, I again, I said this is this is something that I planned out. Um, it was actually something I planned out at the end of last season when they said, we're going to go find Squee. And I was thinking about it for a while. I'm like, you know, an interesting twist. 
Squeeze Cad's dad. <laughs> Cad's real dad. And his mom had an affair. I came up with it then. So it was at the end of last season when they decided to go to Shiv. I'm like, that's going to be an interesting twist I'm going to add in. And I finally got to do it. After like 20 sessions, I'm really like, guess who your dad is? An immortal. So you might be immortal? Honestly, as I said, like, out of game, my uh, my idea was he has, like, elf lifespan. He's not actually immortal, but yeah. he's, like, nigh immortal kind of thing. And it's probably, like, he also <clears throat> might have bonuses, like, it, it, he might have, like, an extra death save or something like that, too. It's harder for him to actually die, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. not impossible. Cass, Cass found his dad, and Cole made a business deal. He did. He made I'm some business. sexier, man. He, yeah. He's already peak sexy. <laughs> he made a business deal with, like, some eccentric various... goblin millionaires eccentric millionaire goblins who are definitely just freaks they are really freaks that was the point i'm trying to like make them seem like the weirdest freaks you could have has also sold a potion of fire uh, yeah <laughs> yes. so that's a thing that's just gonna exist in the world now i'm like you know this is like a really good assassination tool you drink it and someone explodes <laughs> Yeah, you know? It's not a great thing to have out of the to, world. You just gave That's it to people in Shiv. You gave it to unscrupulous people in Shiv. Give it to goblins. The, 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 it's like they're goblin business people. They will use it. They will find people like <coughs> assassins to sell it to. They're it, not great. No. No. At least it's not a nuke. I mean, yes. It's It's... It, it does. It's five d six. You know, it'll it'll probably kill off. Like if you're just trying to assassinate like random Joe schmoes on the street. Yeah. Most important people will be fine. Yeah, because they have a few hit dice. You know, um, it'll probably shock the crap out of them and might you know like cause an situation that an assassin could take advantage of. But certainly, you I, know. I just want to say, drinking an explosion. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the idea that when you start drinking, oh. an explosion originates from you. So, yeah, what what it is, is um, because the way these mechanically work is you drink it and it casts the spell on yourself. So it would cast fire by <laughs> your feet. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, an orb of fire travels through your digestive system yeah. at crazy yeah. speeds and then hits the ground underneath your feet and explodes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this fireball is a tiny little thing <clears throat> that flies over and then blows up. Yeah, <laughs> little orb. Yep, yeah. and uh, so this, you this orb just passes. The through. drinker would probably have disadvantage their re, uh, their dexterity saves. I'm gonna say absolutely, definitely have disadvantage. <laughs> they don't see it coming, <laughs> and they're at the <laughs> origin of the explosion. Uh, uh, just uh, is, and <clears throat> maybe if they knew what the potion was and still willingly drank it, they could have a regular roll. But yeah. like, that's weird. Like, I know, I know, and weirdly, to, to, to go back to my game, there is a certain Kitsune who's immune to fire who could yeah. technically just drink a potion of fireball and be fine. I mean, if the second game, the post-sequel game ever happens, he's only going to be resistant to fire. Ah, because they're... It's a class or subclass. Yeah. Ball. It is a subclass thing. Yeah. Um. It... it, it... It was silly, and there was some interesting things, but I think it went well overall, and it did kind of push the plot forward, because like one of the major things yeah. you have is, you have the old yeah. maps of the Evancar Tower, um, and a I'll lot of the underground. I'll meet with Tefri yeah. one day. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on having that happen. Probably I assume it's probably next time. Yeah, it'll probably be bef right before the Elder meeting, honestly. Man's a busy man. He's got shit to do. I Honestly, he's he might have been... Well... Judging him, he probably was hanging around Dominari. He he does go to other planes, but not as much yeah. anymore. You know, it's like when it's needed. Yeah, family. Yeah, he, he, like you know, granted he's got an adult daughter, but you know, he, he's got to check in on her occasionally, make sure she's like you know making good choices. Probably Who are you dating? Who are yeah, you dating? Probably, Do I have to like send them to another dimension forever? <laughs> definitely that kind of person. Yeah, I, I feel like he's the the father that would you know he 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 definitely like you know. Do I have to plane shift your boyfriend? <laughs> he will well, not no. survive it. <laughs> he will not survive it. 
his skin will be flayed inside out or something horrible. I don't know what happens in planar travel now to normal people without weird means, um... but since undead are the only things that happen and Phyrexians that travel tend to lose a lot of their flesh... I think, think it's not it's good. Pretty bad. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. I uh, think there was a conversation about carrion plane traveling. She's got but, demon blood. That's why. Yeah. So that's that's the only thing that would save the, them from like horrible <clears throat> like flesh death. <clears throat> yeah. I, and I said like, Kaz could come up with some kind of planar bubble that might work. Uh, you know, that's because that's the kind of technology he's developing. Again. I'm going to tell you, the, pa- the ability to do that, he's not probably going to easily do that. That might be like a post-game thing, figuring that kind of thing out, because it's... E- even the concept of it that might work is still really difficult. <coughs> Cole has weird powers. <coughs> uh, I have a stick. You have a stick. It's a nice stick, it talks to you. He's a, he's a bro. <laughs> he's like he's like true neutral stick. He's like dude, and, and ultimate uh, wingman, the uh, stick. <laughs> and like I didn't give him a purpose as like a magic item, so he's like, yeah, I don't. I, I can just hang around, man. I, I don't have a purpose. I'm just. I a... don't even carry the stick anymore. The stick floats near me. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then of course we talked about our Friday game that we had that. Uh, yeah. Thing, yeah. That it I ended. ended. Yeah, it ended. there was a big end. Got Tantus to come and revise their character, who uh, was surprisingly higher level than I thought we were at the end of that game. Yes. I also uh, thought you were only level eight at the end of that game. The thing is, yeah, yeah. you told me to level up to nine just in case these characters would come back at some point in time. So I did the basic leveling. Uh, and I did it right at the end of the session. I hundred percent forgot about that. Because I'm a fighter, yeah. and I got indomitable, and that's you're, all. That you're I you're a fighter. Fighters are the easiest thing to level up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Barbarian might actually be easier. <clears throat> Barbarian has a lot less stuff going on. Barbarian is you hit thing. It's like I stick. speaking. Barbarian has been added to the video game Baldur's mm. Gate, I believe. Mm. So I'll play you can get when angry. Bard, I'll play when Bard's in the game. <sighs> I. It won't so be till it's out. I am so excited to play that game with yeah. like Momo and maybe yeah, Tantus. It's got, it's got co-op, right? I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna buy it when it comes out. Yeah, like that. I mean, they they've taken some liberties, and some of them I hope they they take back on. Like everyone can bonus action hide, which is incredibly broken. Yeah, um, that sounds really broken. Yeah, it's super broken because if you just like, oh, I'm gonna take this thief um, background or whatever. That sounds awful. You, you get proficiency with stealth. Oh, and Dex characters are still the best. You know, like because you get dex to damage with in 5e. So if you just make a dex character elf and you get a background or a class that gives you stealth proficiency, you just hide in the bush as a bonus action and ambush people for days. But to be fair, the starting adventure is kind of hard. So like I'm mostly okay I've with heard. abusing it. That, that's yeah, actually like, what I've heard. It's actually like really difficult. It's fairly... weirdly difficult. So I, I, I'm assuming there's going to be a balance pass. Uh, oh, definitely, because it's early access, so they're yeah, they're, yeah, they're so are actively access. play testing it. Um, but yeah, we we had the end of my game. Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, we had three big fights. There was uh, like I said, the, the, I had a skeleton upscaled to be a fire giant that I used. Uh, you fought two of them, uh, both solo, because uh, otherwise it would have been a mega deadly encounter. Yeah, um, and it probably would have killed somebody. Uh, because they did like 30 damage a hit uh, and they had multi-attack but because Badger's a cavalier any attack that wasn't on Badger was disadvantaged so that really helped uh, Badger was also a higher level than the party so that helped Yeah. Um, I had a big, like a lot of the NPCs and stuff where they were all narrative and like hey, they go and fight a bunch of other undead because it's, spoilers, there was more than a handful of speed zombies and two giant skeletons there Oh yeah. Right? Right. <laughs> So, like, it made sense that those people were off dealing with, like, some of the lesser threats while you guys were going after the big threats. Yeah. Um, so there, there was a, a fair bit of narrative. Some of it was just kind of implied uh, with the adventuring parties, and then others were uh, literally, like, uh, the, the very end uh, fight. Um, we, I just did all narrative. Um, I think you would have been fine. I think you could have done that without anything because she was but she was debuffed and there were spells i just wasn't going to use I, I i mostly pushed for the narrative because it was getting kind of late <laughs> it was also getting late yeah we ran for the full like extra time which was yeah. the, the four hours and that was with the narrative 
Like, if if we decided to do that as a, a full fight, it probably well, would have wrapped up next week. Yeah. Yeah. So that was another reason to do the narrative is just because it saved him some time. I technically um, have to write down what my character does because she does some things that may or may not be important to the time. Yeah, there's like there's like 20 years of stuff that people can message me all about or or not, and I can just kind of assume that <coughs> hey, you know, they do this. Honestly, right? I'm gonna yeah. I would I... just leave uh, Badger Nebulous, you know. Honestly. Badger, yeah. Badger exists when he's needed to. Exactly. Yeah. Badger, Badger's like the legendary <coughs> superhero Badger, apparently of the split realm. Badger's gonna come back. 20 years on a dire badger. Yes. That's probably going to be a thing. Yeah. Your your mother has bred a new breed of dire badgers that Super are badgers. Uh, they're probably they're probably like CR3 or something. Yeah. So, and like, probably it's strong. it's still Gur cuz he's like, you know, we we're saying he's immortal, but I'm like I'm like uh, I I don't know he's immortal, so I'm like, "Gur, you should be careful of your muscles. You're getting so old now." I'm really surprised yeah. you're so still alive. Gur, Gur ate the racist worldly old man in your village and then he became a super badger. <laughs> uh, yeah, was that Oh, uh, was it Uncle Uncle I forget uh, what... Carrie or something? Yeah, like the, the crazy uncle that was really racist, but he was the only one that knew stuff about the world. So it's sort of like I'm like, man, uh, I, like I, I, you know, I'm like Badger realized really early on he just didn't know anything. That guy, and I'm just like, man, ah, uh, Jesus, kind of a dick. I don't what? think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hi, Damien. What's up? You okay? Uh, but yeah, that was. I thought that was a really good ending. Uh, I, I was really it. happy with it. I had fun. What's up? I think I could have made the narrative combat yeah. side a little bit better, but I felt like whatever. It's like it's you would stab them with swords and hit them with explosive spells. Yeah, you know, it's not. It, it it's more fun when the players can describe it, or if you, like you get a kill, like a finishing blow or something. Yeah, and uh, there was a couple finishing blow ki kills that happened that I thought were pretty cool. Uh, the the first uh, skeleton golem. Uh, Cell forgot to do a sneak attack, for which is four damage, which is exactly how much hit points it had left. Which meant that on the previous turn, Momo, uh, I forget what spell you used. Uh, I used my staff. For my, well, my gun. Oh, my you death. shot it with the the gun or whatever, the magic gun. So yeah, that would have like blown it to pieces uh, because it had like four less hit points. So that was kind of a cool narrative death. Uh, there was some zombies that got like chopped in half because they're just they're zombies. They were buffed up zombies, but they're still zombies. Yeah. Um, and there was also the second big skeleton, which uh, we had like a like a there was a um, a shield effect. I was a uh, like oh I cast shield so that attack misses. So I rolled the damage anyway because there was like on the map there was like this rock. So it's like all right the rock takes twenty seven damage and explodes next to you. I thought that was kind of cool. And then um, I think it died on, like, the next attack. So it was like, okay, so Badger had, like, smacked it in the knee with the shield to make it so the attack was, like, disadvantaged. And then the shield went off. And then um, I think uh, Alame hit it with the Warhammer, uh, like, right in the, the knee that Badger had shield blasted, blowing the knee up, and it falls to the ground and, like, falls apart. And So there was a lot of, like, cool, like, narrative, like, kill things and then the, the final battle. Um and I was really happy with it. Uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I think you know that was a good one because it was a good mix of like there was some actual combat, there was some narrative combat, you know, and you know I think it's going back to our original deeper discussion when we we're talking about that. It's like you have to feel out what's best for your campaign, and honestly, that's not mm -hmm. always easy. That's not always yeah. easy to figure out. Uh, if your campaign is going to need a big combat at the end, if you have a big boss, you certainly are. Um, like, technically, Children of Wrath has a big boss, but hasn't really shown themselves. So, honestly, like, I'm not gonna have it narrative. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna have it narrative. I'm not gonna have it a combat because, like, also that game, I just don't want to fuck around with combat after these players have been through so much weird shit and they, I, I have no idea how to combat them anymore. Like, uh, it, 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 a lot of their abilities have just become narrative trope you know i gave them a lot of weird abilities and like when they went non-combat they just went like well they're all narrative now pretty much it also like 5e gets kind of hard to balance at higher levels <clears throat> like my, my party you guys weren't a super super high level you're eight uh, or no seven which is still pretty good yeah uh cell 
became eight because they did a demon a deal with the devil or a yeah. deal with the demon. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were slightly higher, and then like and Badger, right? Badger came back and was was um uh, level level nine. Yeah. So I had a little bit of like the mixed um leveling thing, which okay. eh, was mostly fine. Like it didn't really matter too much at the wow. end. Um, but you know, players have a lot of to hit, and they have a lot of you know hit points and stuff, and. A lot of five E enemies are just more hit points, and more damage. Um, so uh, I personally try to uh, balance like damage and AC when I think of like encounters. So I, I'm more likely to have like more enemies or like a wave system where there's reinforcements that come in to keep that CR challenge relative without being like all right uh, you fight uh, three adult dragons um and this other thing because that's just a slug fest and i don't think yeah. it's as interesting as like yeah. you know like maybe oh, let's say you wanted to have them fight three dragons <clears throat> but you have it where like it's this one dragon and like some minions you know and then like oh well he <laughs> comes to this his his like his mate or whatever shows up right to like reinforce right and then like somewhere halfway through that you know there's like a reinforcement I'm, I'm talking like super high level if your party is fighting like multiple dragons but like yeah. there's there's ways that you can still have it be a difficult encounter mm -hmm. without just throwing like here's a CR20 creature it's like eh 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 yeah and it's also your players like you know know your players right <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Just figuring it out and uh, having the right ending for your campaign is like, if you're getting to that point in time, just think about it. Just consider what works best for your campaign. Um, you know, just yep. figure it out and do it. Um, because honestly, like I will tell you, uh, I'm technically going to call the end of a season as soon as they're done in Shiv. So the end of season two of Wrath is going to be close here. I don't know what if I'm going to like you know do a lot of difference between it, but I'll take a little like a couple weeks break in between. Uh, honestly, just to, like I might have a bonus session of a couple like uh, the discussion, like the the things with Joe having like talking to some of his spirits. I might do like in between seasons a couple of those where you can like have these like scenes in a row, like talking to some of these uh, like spirits inside of him, working with them because like that was a narrative thing that I set up for him. But it's kind of hard to do that without interrupting the game, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the final season was going to be basically Urborg stuff. And the results afterwards, which I have um, a list of things that I'm planning out, and uh, we'll just see how well those go. So sort of like I have a end of a campaign in sight, just I don't know how long it will take. And this is why I'm not always on the show because we're now at uh, two hours and fifty-two minutes. It was a very long. This was a, way too long. Uh, this was long. <laughs> this was long. I didn't even notice the time until you just said that. Yes, one. Jesus. That's... That's kind of why when I noticed the time, I'm like, hey, we should talk about our games, because it's like, woo. We, we went late. We went late today. Um, yep. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it happens sometimes. Um, it do happen. Not usually. but, <laughs> but we're usually we, we did have an end of a campaign. So. Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty big discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's good enough for today. Um, you know, we, we, we got some good stuff to talk about, and I hope everybody... You know, you take something from this, especially if you're running a long campaign, and just think about what's fun for your characters too. You know, uh, uh, your players and those characters, and then work off yes. of that. Uh, as for schedules uh, for the week, um, I guess it's a good thing to shout out. So again, no Buccaneers this week. I'll throw out an announcement after the show on uh, Twitter at least. Um, you know, uh, my Discord schedule won't have it up, you know, when I put the schedule up. So uh, that should reach most people that watch it and know about it. Um, that uh, we'll take one more week off. I'll make sure to have everything set up. And then, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to that one person that was ready in May. And if I can get them, I'm going to stop my thing and just have them show up in May then, you know, with a cool character. So I think that'll be the plan. And we'll just... I, I can figure something out very easily storyline. Again, that's one of the great things about Buccaneers. It's a pirate game. Switching around characters, not as difficult as other games. Yeah. Unlike Carrion Crown, where if you're not in from the beginning, it's really weird to kind of get more people in. 
We yeah, tried our best. You know, we, we did try. There are certain other campaigns that like work well and others that don't. I feel like, you know, something like a um Rise of the Rune Lords, that can that can work because again, like you're just like adventure people it's, that became heroes, you know. Just dudes. Yeah, you're just dudes that like, you know, ran into a situ- keep running into situations for a long time and then finally find uh, at one point in time figure out, oh, these situations are related. Guess what? You could just be another dude that faced some other shit that also came to the same spot. Like, you run into each other. Like, you know, you can say something lightning. Oh, like how Badger got brought back. Yeah. It's just like, he just was there. Like, hey, yeah, there was a bunch of adventurers or, you know, like being called in. There's like some horrible evil. I'm here to stop it. Yeah. It's like there's this one point you go to, like this really ridiculous dungeon. You could be, you could just have like a new person run into them right in front of it that you're like, uh, hey, hey, what do you want? What are you doing here? I'm like, well, like I was fighting this evil cult and like, you know, there are like some being that exists here apparently and they're trying to resurrect. I'm like, and they're like, wait, is it the cult of blah, blah, blah? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're after the same cult. You want to help us out with this thing here? Sure. I why won't not? totally betray you or anything. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, that's. <laughs> That's that's what uh, insight slash sense motive is for. <laughs> uh, there might be some uh, of that. Uh, Just roll like a sixty for deception. Yeah, sixty for deception. Uh, I'm really like a <laughs> giant yeah. dragon that's here to eat you. <laughs> no. That's uh, the new plot of my game, Tantus. How dare you spoil it? Uh-huh. Um. So yeah. Uh, Children of Wrath should be on this week. Uh, my stream schedule should be up. I should be doing more Final Fantasy V, Pathfinder, Kingmaker. I'm pretty close to the... Honestly, I know I'm definitely close to the end of Kingmaker. I have the Pataxis crap, and then I have, um, like, two other major story beats, and I'm done the game. So it's honestly... I don't know if I'll finish it this week, but I'm close to being done it. Um, it's been a longer campaign than I thought it would be, uh, definitely. Pretty long game. Yeah. Um, and, I, I, and with all my complaints, I still enjoyed it. So I think I'll have a full opinion of it when I've done it. Uh, just like I've had of these, the various Final Fantasies. Um, but I'll do some more five. I think, like, my doing it, like, once a week has been pretty good to cool off from, like, marathoning through a lot of them. I kind of have to say. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, thank you, Momo. Thank you, Lightning, uh, yeah. for joining me. Um, is there anything else other than the normal stuff you're including with me uh, that you're doing? Um uh, no, nope. not that I'm more of. Okay, cool. I I need to work on other things, <laughs> no. not in so many games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're taking a lot of breaks from stuff, and I understand that. You're just getting the right things set up. Um, so ba 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 ba. Yeah, we I talked my, about all the games. I saw my schedule for the week. Uh, yeah, hey everybody, hopefully have a good yeah. one, and uh, we'll all hopefully see you at another time uh, here. I'll definitely be here, hopefully be here next week uh, as long as the schedule goes, and uh, bye for now. So, farewell everyone! Goodbye. Let me move this mouse over to stop stream and just hit this button.